What's going on everyone? It's Adam here from Adam's Nintendo World and today we are doing a 100% Well, it's not 100% because there's multiple paths. You'll see. We're playing through Beacon Pines though. We're playing through Beacon Pines Coming out on Nintendo Switch. Uh, really excited for this one. Great art, great storytelling, great idea. And we're gonna hop into it right now. I hope you enjoy folks. Dear I hope you reader, enjoy. Allow me to introduce you to my book. Though it might at first appear like many books you've come across, it is far from ordinary. You may, therefore, have some misunderstandings about its nature. The story that awaits you has not been fully told. In fact, its conclusion is not yet known, even to myself. It is in that way that my book is special It is in that way that you are special. Without you, there is no story. Chapter one. Normal isn't what it used to be. This is a story about change. Nestled in a shallow valley is the town of Beacon Pines. Far from the town square, across the river, past the neglected welcome sign, a young boy walks alone at dawn. His name is Luca Van Horn, and like you, dear reader, he's here for a reason. And just like that, we take control of Luca right out of the storybook. Very excited about this one. So we can walk around just like this. So the narrator is voice acted. I will be doing the voices for all the characters as we play. So bear with me, and I hope you enjoy. Hey, Dad. How are things going? Today's the first day of summer vacation. I start middle school next year, I guess. I was six years old when you died, and it's been six years now. From here on out, you'll have been gone longer than you were here. It feels like that should mean something. Mama always said that this tree was your favorite spot in the world. Me too. Hey, Luca. I knew I'd find you here. Rolo was Luca's closest friend. He possessed many fine qualities, but subtlety was not one of them. Well, after I banged on your door till your gran answered, and after I checked the pond and climbed up to the treehouse, then I knew I'd find you here. Rolo finally noticed the tears swelling in his friend's eyes and the flowers on the grave. Oh, yeah, right. You and your mom always did this on your dad's birthday. Yeah. I didn't know if you were going to keep doing it now that your mom's gone, too. She's not gone. She's just... missing. Sorry, I meant to say since she went missing. She's going to come back, Rolo. Of course she is. Okay, Dad. See you next time. I think I'm ready to get out of here. Sure, lead the way. All right, and just like that, we kind of get to explore a little bit. Now, ultimately, we're going to be looking for things called charms, and charms are going to help us tell stories, or tell the story. So we got our first charm, which is tickle, um, and we'll use that later on. You'll see. So there we go. We got the tickle charm. Wonderful. I had a good feeling about you from the moment you opened my book. That charm is a very special thing. Very special indeed. Keep hold of it for now. Its purpose will reveal itself soon enough. Okay. Um, so we did that. So let's keep moving. Oh, we just sneezed again. <laughs> All those flowers. Oh, yeah. I almost forgot. The whole reason I was looking for you. I was wondering if you'd ever get to that. I found the perfect way to start our summer. How's that? Rolo looked to the side suspiciously. Not here. They might be watching. They who? Shh! Not so loud. We need to do this in a secure location. Mission control. 
All right, I just have to tell Gran and then we can head out. What are you going to tell her? I don't know. I'll think of something. If it's all the same to you, I'll meet you at the welcome sign. You, Your Gran still kind of wigs me out. I don't do well with new people. She moved in like half a year ago. Just meet me at the sign when you're done. Suit yourself. I won't be long. Okay, so we have our first mission. Tell Gran before heading out with Rolo. Um, okay, so there we go. There's our missions. So, uh, can we explore out here a little bit? Is there anything to see? We do jump with uh, A, but we also explore with A, but I'm not seeing anything that we can do. Oh! What's this? It was absolutely nothing. I was waiting for something to Nikki happen. Knew that if he left without telling Ran, it would be trouble. We don't want trouble. We don't want trouble. Let's head inside. Dear reader, forgive me for this interlude. Remember that charm you found in the dandelion patch? There are more of those special charms to discover throughout Beacon Pines. They've been known to reveal themselves to those who are willing. Some of them can be found in this very house. Oh, okay, so we can find charms in the house. Well, let's look around for some charms. Just some dusty knickknacks. Since Gran had moved in, the house was more peaceful, more orderly. And more covered in flowery fabric. The look of this game is great. Stethoscopes. Luca had spent countless hours listening to anything and everything with it. Not for years, though. <laughs> look at that. We're relaxing in the chair. Oh, we got Ponder. Okay, we got the Ponder charm. Nice. We can check that out right, uh, right there. We got Tickle and we got Ponder. Let's slide off the chair. Grant had already lit the fire. She kept a warm house, as if by grandmotherly obligation. Okay, let's head, um, let's go find Grant. We're gonna head for the back of the house, probably the kitchen. piece of furniture Gran had brought when she moved in was an old hutch. I can see the little sink animation when I clicked it. That's cool. A pair of dull scissors, a broken can opener, a mostly empty bottle of glue, and some loose string. <laughs> Everyone's got a junk drawer. Everyone's got a junk drawer. meals crowded the refrigerator each labeled with the day of the week all right let's uh let's head with the back door oh my this is quite exciting i am now certain that you are the one i've been waiting for all these years you'll recall i was a bit coy regarding the use of charms earlier Excuse me, I tend to have a flair for the dramatic. You are about to encounter your first turning point. There are certain times in this tale when everything hinges on a single word. Step forth, dear reader. Young Luca would spend hours hiding in the bushes, waiting for a chance to jump out and startle his mother. I love how much story there is already for those willing to go look she for She always enjoyed humoring him by feigning terror. A sturdy old wheelbarrow. Sometimes it matters and sometimes it doesn't, but it's still A nice. A beginner's guide to gardening laid open on the bench. Mm -hmm. 
Hey, Gran, I'm gonna go. For Pete's sake, go change out of your pajamas before you say another word. But, but nothing. Inside clothes are for inside. And outside clothes are for outside. Lucas stared at his feet and muttered under his breath. Mom always let me wear my pajamas in the garden. Well, Eleanor isn't here, is she? Now go upstairs, change, and then we'll talk. Right, of course. I forgot about the pajamas. <laughs> All right. No pajamas outside. I love how he walks inside and runs outside. Neat little touch. Luca paused at his parents' bedroom door. He just wasn't ready to go in yet. Aw, oh, poor Luca. Gran had commandeered the upstairs closet when she moved in. Some things need shelter from a young boy's mischief, she said. That's okay, though. Gran's bed was undisturbed. Luca didn't mind that she had a habit of falling asleep in front of the fireplace. It meant that he could read late into the night. I definitely did that as a kid, reading late at night when you weren't supposed to. Gran's moving in meant that most of Luca's things had been crammed in the corner. Luca was somewhat annoyed by the situation. Luca tossed on his favorite old sweater. Even though it was the first day of summer, a chill still hung in the air. Ooh, we got chill. Is that our fourth one? Fifth one, we got chill, high junk, ponder, tickle. Absolutely love it. Let's go back outside and see Gran. Um, and enjoy our first turning point, which is, you guys are going to see what that means in just one hot second. Okay, I'm going to go hang with Rolo for the day. See you later. All right, we've technically finished this quest. Hold up now. Where are you and Ho Rolo headed exactly? Oh, nowhere special. The less Gran knew, the better for everyone involved. Okay, our first turning point. We were going to go... Chill for the day. We were just going to go chill for the day. We we're going to go chill for the, the day. lies are built on truth. You boys are always in a hurry to do nothing. We stick to what we're good at. Well, make sure you're done chilling in time for Easy. supper. Impressive. You've managed to navigate your first turning point without too much of a mess. That is the power of charms. A single word can change everything. I think it's time to introduce you to the Chronicle. Okay, we're going to press up on the D-pad and uh, up on the buttons. Sorry, the not Chronicle the D-pad. is a record of the decisions you've made. You can see the turning point, which has been revealed. At any time, you can use the Chronicle to go back and invoke different charms, creating new branches. Luckily for us, this is the one and only turning point where the charms won't dramatically alter fate. It's the perfect opportunity to experiment with rewriting things. Okay, so we can click this and rewrite this piece of the story. And all of a sudden we flip to this page, we're just gonna go... So let's say hide and see, because this will be funny, I think. We were just gonna go I think. <laughs> for the day. We're just gonna go hide for the day. Hide? Traditionally, when one is trying to hide something, they avoid literally using the word hide. <laughs> yeah, I guess Rolo bet some other kids that we could beat them in hide and seek. Aren't you a little old for that? It's not like there's much else to do around here. Well, make sure you boys are done playing your little games in time for supper. All's well that ends well. All 
All right, so nothing that terrible happened. Oh, and Luca, you and Rolo stay out of trouble. I know, I know. Okay. Get into trouble with Rolo. Done. Oh, no, not done. Get into trouble with Rolo is our next, um, is the next part of the next quest. All right, let's go meet Rolo. Come on, come on. Dang it, Rolo. For a town that saw few visitors, the welcome was perhaps more grand than necessary. That's supposed to be grand? You know the drill. Don't let anyone discover our secret path. <laughs> Look at him back up. <laughs> Chapter 2 Welcome to Beacon Pines. For many years, this valley had been a small mining outpost. It wasn't until Sharper Valentine built his fertilizer company that Beacon Pines was established. Over the next 30 years, the town had grown and prospered. Until the foul harvest and his sudden death. In the six years since, everyone was simply trying to get by. Here's an opportunity for us to learn more about the people here. Hey, Mr. Kerr. Hey there, pal. William Kerr was the CEO of Perennial Harvest Company. He had become a fixture around town over the past few years. After the failing of Valentine Fertilizer, the town was hungry to welcome a new source of employment. Excited for the big festival. Um, sure. Come on now, when I was your age, there was nothing more exciting than a town festival. The food, the music, the dancing. Sounds pretty alright. You're gosh dang right it is. I'm looking forward to letting off some steam myself. Make sure to invite all your little friends. I couldn't keep Rolo away if I tried. Excellent. Sorry, Luca. Gotta get back to the proverbial grindstone. Our harvest awaits and all that. Oh, now the left side, a little low. Sorry, young Mr. Van Horn can't talk right now. Very busy with preparation. Here, Augustus Valentine was not busy. <laughs> he was not busy. Uh, sorry, Gus. How many times do I? It's Mayor. It's Mayor Valentine. Uh. Flustered, Gus instinctively loosened his tie. Keep up the good work. I must briefly attend to a concerned citizen. Huh? It's nothing. Keep at it. All right. What can the mayor of Beacon Pines do for you today? Oh, just saying hi, I guess. Huh. Well, good day to you too, young Mr. Van Horn. <laughs> All right. We will explore the other side of the river. Oh, these are just points where I can lean and enjoy the world. That's kind of cool. All right, let's see what this says. Old Pickler's Pond. So this is the way Rolo went, so we'll go this way. Okay, so like, what's going on here? Mission Control. Authorized personnel only. Hey, Jetson. Is the Lions playing any tunes today? No bites this morning, I'm afraid. Come to think of it, I can't remember the last time I reeled one in. But hey, by hey, it was never about the catch. This is where I come to think. Yeah, that's what my dad used to do here. That reminds me, if you ever want this chair back, his chair back, I've taken to standing recently. It keeps me from falling asleep at the reel. If you don't mind, I think it should stay. Not at all. An empty chair makes for a great listener. Whenever Luca saw his dad's chair by the pond, 
It reminded him of the days they'd pack up a couple of sandwiches and fish until sundown. Oh, we just headed back in time and now it's now it's us hanging out. This is cool. Luca opened the tackle box and picked the perfect bait. Luca tied a shoestring to the hook. We picked junk. What fish could resist a nice shoestring? He tied the shoestring. <laughs> what fish couldn't? <laughs> uh, man, I mean, it's the only options we had. Give it a good cast now. You'll have to reel it in a bit faster. Or your catch will lose interest. <laughs> Go pick out your bait from the tackle box, buckaroo. I don't have good bait, apparently. Luca gently baited a feather onto the hook. A feather? Good for skimming the surface. <laughs> You'll have to reel it in a bit faster, or your catch will lose interest. Go pick more bay. Luca tied a sh- What fish could- do I have to do something here? Oh, okay, I see. I hold the A button to pull it in. Easy there, buckaroo. You don't know your own strength. All right, so we'll try the feather again. And do I have to tap it? No, just pull it. Oh, it goes red. I see. Okay, so it goes red, so I can't let it go red. Luca gently We're slowly appears. learning. We're slowly learning how this is done. I don't know if you guys saw the line going red, but... Just gotta be a little careful with it. There we go. Give it a little slack. There we go! We pulled up a rubber duck. Well, I'll be switched. It's your old rubber ducky. You were just a little drooling ball of fur when you lost that. Cried for days. I told you I'd turn up. <laughs> Let's go grab our rubber duck. Why can't I grab it? Oh, we have to go pick. Okay, so that was the feather, right? So let's get the junk back. And we'll try this again see what else we dig up. Because we can't go grab that duck. But we've learned how to fish now. And let her off and pull. And let it off and pull. What do we find? An old boot? Where do you think the other one is? Hard to say. Sometimes things drift away. That's not fair. No, it's not. Well, wherever it is. I hope the other boot at least has a sock to keep it company. More bait. We just gotta keep fishing, I think. Luca tied a shoot. What fish could? I wish they didn't do the text over and over again. Like that doesn't seem necessary. All right, let's see what we can find this time. Maybe we have to fill up that rug with items. I'm not really sure. We found another boot. What? Can we go look at the items? I can't look at the items. Can I leave? Oh, I can leave. Oh, so all that was was just a little bit of storytelling. That's so interesting. I don't hate that. I don't think I needed to do it, but that was cool, kind of. Let's head down this way. <clears throat> Keep out. <laughs> all right. Always had a good thing going. As long as they kept old Jeff happy. They had an endless source of precious materials to add to the treehouse.
again, uh, absolutely loving the way this game looks. Like, I love how this game looks. After Luca's father had passed, Rolo became obsessed with them building their own Hank Atomic Star Scraper. It was some time before Luca realized it was Rolo's way of keeping him occupied. Oh, Rolo's a good friend. Oh, I don't want to go to the Chronicle. <laughs> I don't want to do that. I don't want to change On anything. certain nights, when the clouds were just right, the boys could tune into strange patterns of static. Rolo thinks it's aliens. He always thinks it's aliens. Luca's winter coat decommissioned for the summer. With the cold holding out longer than usual, he reconsidered its usefulness. All right, let's chat with Rolo. Oh, what's this top secret plan to start our summer? So you know the abandoned warehouse by my place? The old Valentine building? Yeah, well, it isn't abandoned. What makes you think that? Get this. Last night, it was glowing. Glowing, are you sure? Kinda. The place has been empty since... Since the fowl harvest? Yeah. Who would ever want to poke around that place? We would, Rolo. We would. Wait, wait, wait. It's just a busted old warehouse. I just meant we could do some research at the library. You want to actually go to the warehouse? What do you expect to find? Answers. My mom's out there somewhere. And it seems like everyone wants to pretend that she's gone for good. You don't have to come, Rolo, if you don't want to. Luca, remember that time I sort of accidentally burned down the chicken coop? And you jumped in and said it was your fault before my pa throttled me? This is a flaming chicken coop sort of deal. I've got your back. Thanks, Rolo. Now that I think about it, poking around a decrepit fertilizer warehouse is exactly how I want to spend the first day of summer. Let's go! <laughs> oh my goodness, how much I love Rolo. Oh man, I love Rolo. Alright, let's move, I guess. We're going to head for this warehouse. Alright, so I think we're probably crossing here. And that means we have more people to talk to. Hey, Mr. Sinclair. Mr. Sinclair continued snoring and lifted one eyelid just enough to see who it was. A tactic he often used to avoid undesirable conversation. Smart man. Yoo-hoo, Mr. Sinclair. Ah, don't you see I'm sleeping, boy? How's the napping today? Crummy, as always. Used to have the perfectly nice view from here. Till perennial harvest put up that monstrosity of a building in that way. Why don't you just move your chair a bit? Why should I be the one that moves? If it's the shadow showdown they want, I ain't gonna be the one who blinks. <laughs> Come on, Andy, grab his wallet. I'm sorry, Iggy, I can't. Do it or we pound ya. Yup. Yeah, but my mom said, yeah, but, yeah, but. If I had a nickel for every yeah, but, it'd be a freaking king of nickels. Ain't that right, Tish? Yup. Mr. Van Horn, do you have a moment? It's just Luca. Golly, I'm sorry. It's my first week at Perennial he Harvest. He pen from the pocket of his sweater vest and began to frantically jot something down on a clipboard. Probably my name. Wonderful, it won't happen again. If you're going to be on the first name basis, then you can call me Pete. Oh. Nice to meet you, Pete. Sorry, what are you writing? Oh, just documenting. Gosh, it's exciting to be sp and part of something so darn special. You know, it's not just about new fountains and phone booths. We're going to change the world. And it all starts here in Beacon Pines. Isn't that amazing? Uh-huh. Anyways, I'd better get... Oh, that reminds me. We'd love to hear your thoughts. My thoughts? Yeah, you bet. 
If we're going to change this town, we need to get every detail right. That sounds intense. <laughs> Changing the world is intense. So what do you say? Could you answer a few questions? Well, I guess if it's quick, wonderful. Opening, open to answering a few quick questions. One down. See, it's not that hard, is it? Okay, we're going already. Question two. What is something you love about Beacon Pines? I never really thought about it before. Perfect. It's the only place I've lived. See, that wasn't so painful. Pete stopped scribbling and glanced up from the clipboard. Was it? Uh, I guess not. Who's ah? Our first three questions answered in record time. Are you literally writing everything down? Thank you so much for your time. I need to process these answers. We can save the rest of your thoughts for later. Okay. Our harvest awaits. All right, let's see if there's anything we can look at. Can we go back here to this building? Can we go in? We cannot. Uh, there's no exclamation marks, nothing to sneak around, no one to talk to. Can I go inside the perennial harvest building? I cannot. All right, let's talk to Rolo. I'm just catching my breath a bit. Go on. I'll catch up. Okay, onward we go. Okay, here we are. It looks like Town Square. So we have Town Hall, which we can't access yet, but we can read the sign. Last Chance Diner. The Beacon Beacon. Fulton Wilder ran the local paper of record. The Beacon Beacon. That's outstanding. Hey, Mr. Wilder. Morning, Luca. What's the day have in store for you? I was wondering if you heard any news about... News? The Beacon Beacon knows the news that needs knowing. Any news about the old fertilizer warehouse? Nope. Oh. Rolo thought he saw some light there last night. Huh. Rolo ought to be careful poking around that part of town. The winds of change are blowing. And change is a dangerous animal. Alright, change. This is why you talk to everybody, apparently. You can get all these new charms to use in your conversations. Hey, Mrs. Nelson. Morning, Luca. Any big plans for the summer? Not really. Heard anything about the old fertilizer warehouse? Any strange happenings? Can't say I have. Either, or, either way, a dusty old warehouse is no place for a young boy. You be safe now. Okay. Miss Hatch could often be found near the fountain. Too absorbed in a book to be distracted. The two wandered down the wooded path, unaware of the danger ahead. Oh! Oh, this is getting good. <laughs> Oh, man, it's awesome. Oh, I didn't mean to come up here, but sure. Um, Piper? Oh, hey, Luca, what's up? You know it's summer break, right? Of course. And it's like the morning. Correct. And you're studying? Like they say, the early bird gets the proper education required for a successful and fulfilling career later in life. Hmm. <laughs> hey, Zariel. Hi, Luca. Could you please tell this lazy butt to help out in the cafe? Um, Lumi, Zerio would like you. Luca, let me give you a little gem of advice. If you ever do what you don't love, then you'll never work a day in your life. Wow. You're really setting the kid up for success. <laughs> okay, I love this. This is so charming. There is so much. Like, there's a dark sad story that this is all built on but like what's been built is so satisfying it is so satisfying so far like i want to talk to these people this is what's crazy i don't usually talk to npcs in games i want to talk to these people luca just the fella i was looking for hey roxy what's up oh right rendezvous with roxy this is an important turning point. An important turning point. The first time where your charms will change the course of fate. 
Okay, so this is why we could probably play this multiple times choosing different charms. And currently, we only have one suitable charm at our disposal. Okay, so it's the game is the game going to tell us to go find more charms before we come back? Have no fear. We can always return later using the chronicle once we find more charms. Oh, so I understand. So it's not necessarily you won't have all the charms for this conversation, but when you do collect them, you can come back and then use them and change things. That's interesting. Okay. Well, now I'm just rambling. Where were we? <laughs> Have you seen my blockhead brother today? He skipped out before breakfast. Well, not really. No. Can't say I have. Can't say or won't say. Roxy, would I lie to you? <laughs> Luca, wait up. I almost forgot to tell you. Roxy might be looking, lurking around here. This is one of her favorite places to stand around and be useless. Rolo. So we need to make sure she doesn't spot us. Rolo. <laughs> Why are you doing that turning thing with your body? Wait, you're not scared, are you? She's harmless. And a chump. And she's right around the corner, isn't she? All right, well, that got us into trouble with Rolo, I guess. Don't mind me, just over here lurking uselessly. Oh, hey, hey, sis. Nice weather we're having, eh? I couldn't help but notice you snuck out this morning before breakfast. <laughs> Wasn't hungry. Also couldn't help but notice your morning chores were left unchored. Roxy, I'm going to level with you. I'm sick and tired of digging up carrots. We all got to pick up slack since the fowl harvest. Almost every carrot I dig up is rotten. And the rest look like they were hit with Hank Atomic Shrink Array. All the more reason to keep on digging. There ain't gonna be, there's, there's gotta be more to life than puny carrots. Look, Roxy, Luke and I have places to be, so if you don't mind. Oh, I do mind. I'm not gonna catch hell again because of you. So either you march yourself home and harvest those carrots, or I'll haul you home myself. Rollo froze as Roxy took a step toward him, cracking her knuckles. Family feud, I love it. Luca knew he had one chance to save his friend from being dragged home. Okay, so in the past, he found the best way to deal with an enraged Roxy was to do be a little chill. It's the only option we have. <laughs> in the past, he found uh, the best way to deal out. with an enraged Roxy was to be a little chill. <laughs> Come on, Roxy. It's the first day of summer. The sun is shining and we just want to take it easy. Let's leave tomorrow's problems for tomorrow. That's great and all, but Rolo's problems have a way of becoming my problems. And Pa always says, tomorrow's work is best left for yesterday. March, you big oaf. Ah, rats. I expect a full report about the Valentine place. A full report! All right, investigate the, <laughs> investigate the Valentine Warehouse alone. So, Fitz, what are you up to this lovely day? Nope. Cool, 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 cool. All right, uh, let's look at this statue. Sharper Valentine, founder of Beacon Pines. Never underestimate what a great man can do, given time. Sharper uh, Valentine. Much, if you ask me. It's a bit much if you ask me, too. Oh, indulgent. Nice. I am going to assume the Valentine place is over here. Hey, Solomon. Apologies. No time for chit chat. Okay. Um, I guess let's explore this. All right, let's see where we're going here. Uh, there's a library. Looks like the library hasn't opened yet. I'll check back later. So we were going to go. That was that was Rolo's suggestion, remember? Going to the library and checking it out. We'll talk to you in a second. Oh, Luca, my boy. Hold up a tick. Oh, hey, Mr. Nuncreed. I was just on my way to... 
I just sold the last jar of your grandmother's preserves. Can't stock the shelves fast enough, turns out. Hey, that's great, but I'm actually... I guess Juniper will just have to swing by with more of her lovely jam. Uh-huh. Well, don't let this old man slow you down. You just remind her that she still owes me that dance. A promise Gran regretted the second it was made. <laughs> Will do. She's a fine woman, that Juniper. Yeah, she's pretty cool, I guess. A real fine woman. Uh, gotta go. <laughs> Sweeter than any jam on earth. Oh my goodness. Interesting. The phone booth was brand new. Part of Perennial Harvest's Beacon Pines Reborn initiative. It didn't see much use. I don't know if this is supposed to be set in a specific time. But who knows. Alright, over the bridge. Oh, hey, Luca. Hey, hey, Joey. How's the big hunt going? Not great. Bugs have been shy this week. Bugs get shy? Oh, sure. Bugs aren't different from people. Sometimes they just want to be left alone. If you're, gonna in if, if you're going into weep wood, just be careful where you step. No bug crunching. Got it. All right. So I'm not sure this is where I want to be, though. I will come back if we need to. Um... But I'm going to head back to the square and go, whatever, south. Oh, what's Jeff's this? Jeff's hardware closed down about a year ago. The effects of the foul harvest stretched wide. When there are no crops in the field, tractors don't need fixing. Luca knew that if he gave up now, he'd never hear the end of it from Rollo. Okay, so this is the right way, I guess. All right. I cannot turn back. So let's continue into the Weeping Wood, I guess. Although there's two ways to go. Let's go this way. After the foul harvest destroyed their wealth and reputation, the Valentines shuttered off their estate from the rest of town. The Valentine Mansion loomed over every other building in town, both figuratively and literally. All right, well, at least we finally hit a dead end here. And it doesn't look like I can do anything here. There's nothing to look at, nothing to interact with. All right, so we do have to head into the woods. But at least we know where the mansion is in case we need to come back. That's good, that's good. All right, into the woods we go. The path led into a small hollow at the edge of Weepwood. Okay, no turning back now. Caution, electrified fence. Is that sign new? The fence thrummed with a gentle electric buzz. Okay, so what would Rollo do if he were here? Luca often asked himself what Rollo would do. So that he could rule out that option. <laughs> so he could rule out that, <laughs> rule out that option. I'm definitely not touching that thing. Okay, well, let's see what options we have here. As sparks flew from the fence, the light atop that section shut off. Two bulbs remained. Oh. Two bulbs remained. Okay, we can do this. There we go. That's two. One more to go. The fence's buzzing gave way to silence. All right, I think we solved that problem. Okay, moment of truth. Every kid in town knew the old Valentine Fertilizer Building. Long abandoned, the warehouse once served as the industrial heart of Beacon Pines. Now, it stood only as a reminder of things left behind. The dormant building showed strange signs of life. Okay, so Rolo wasn't exaggerating for once. What's going on here? There was only one way to find out. 
All right, looks like we gotta head into the warehouse. I'm gonna guess we can peek through that window. The hose emitted a subtle sound. It was actively draining some kind of liquid. That can't be good. Is this the liquid that I'm running through? The water looked almost diseased. The water looked almost diseased, yet we're running through it. it. slowly into the woods. No wonder the bug hunts aren't going well. No wonder the bug hunts aren't going well. Okay, so we investigate the Valentine Warehouse alone. Locked. Luca thought he heard faint sounds coming from the other side of the door. Climb on the garbage, Luca. He pressed his ear against the cold metal to hear better. A zipper. Footsteps. The sound of footsteps grew louder. Hello? Poop. <laughs> Poop. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's awesome. The heavy steel door knocked Luca to the ground. Disoriented, he looked up to see an imposing figure silhouetted in a green glow. It lunged toward him. He tried to scramble away, but felt a gloved hand latch onto his ankle. Luca watched his fingernails leave trails in the dirt as the hand slowly dragged him back through the door, into the lab, into the green light. Okay, this is a story about change. It's this the only option is we have here. a story here. about change. It was far from the sort of change Luca imagined for himself. But change is, after all, a dangerous animal. The end? I probably should have warned you about this. The end? <laughs> Did we just lose? Like, is Luca dead? He just got murdered? There are many paths that our story can take. Most will end in tragedy. But don't let that discourage you. Most will end in tragedy? We will find the ending that this story deserves. I just know it. From here on out, a charm will have a check mark when it's been used to its full potential at a given turning point. Ah, okay, that's good to know. So if we've used it, we shouldn't use it again. There'll be a check mark. Now, let's try something different. Okay, so this is a story about. This is a story about yeah, but change. That's the only one I have. It was far from the sort of change Luca imagined for himself. But change is, after all, a dangerous animal. The end? I probably should have warned you. There are many paths that are most will end in tragedy. We will find yeah, that's the only option we have. What am I supposed to do? We'll have it now. Let's try. So we have to go back to here? Do we go back to this part of the story? <laughs> oh my goodness, I am enjoying this so much more right now. In the past, he found the best way to deal with an enraged Roxy. In the past, he found the best way to deal with an enraged Roxy was to be a little pooper. 
Make a break for it. What have you done? And this changes the course of the story. Did that little pooper just kick me? Run all you want, you little twerps. You gotta come home eventually. Alright, this changes a lot of things. Investigate the Valentine Warehouse with Rollo. Sorry about that. Rollo can get overexcited sometimes. Sorry, Valentine. Current ward of and future successor to the Valentine Fortune. Huffed as he brushed off his pants. A town of complete and utter fools. One wonders if it's worth taking anything here seriously. Either way, I'm really sorry. No matter, how are you doing? Me? Yeah, with all the business about your mother and whatnot. Oh, I'm getting by. Still no word from her at all? No. That is truly a shame. And now we got shame. Oh, cool. I see how things are working now. Your grandmother has taken residence to keep house? Yeah. And how's that going? We mostly stay out of, out of each other's way. You make it sound like she's rarely at home. It's not like that. She just has a lot to do. Hmm. She's still settling in and trying to figure out how to make ends meet. Indeed. Well, count your blessings. It's better to have a caretaker who is rarely around in lieu of one who tries to compensate by smothering you with attention. That doesn't sound so bad. Trust me when I say, it's best to rely on yourself. Family has a way of creating more problems than they solve. Oh, who's this dude? Solomon, Solomon. the gesture toward the approaching heiress, Valentine. Speak of the devil. Do not wander off like that. I'm much too busy to be looking all over for you. Apologies, heiress. I was just taking a stroll through town. Strolls are for commoners. You're a valentine now. I want you to be present for the construction of the History Museum. The future of this town relies on its ability to remember our family's great past. Of course. Alright, well, I feel bad for him. Okay, so uh, is this going to be all the same? Oh, so I can't even interact here with the library, so I must have already done that. But can we talk to this guy? Luca, my boy, hold up a tick. Uh, sorry, Mr. Nuncreed, kind of in a hurry right now. Oh, we skipped that conversation. Oh, we ran off. Ah, boys get too much of his father. Boys got too much of his father in him. All right. Oh, we just head straight here. Oh, he tried to get in. Oh, no, he didn't. I win. Little help. I am the champion. We were racing. Did that road get longer? Like anything ever changes around here. It seemed longer. You're just lightheaded from the run. You really need to pace yourself better next time. Not sure why I take advice from second place. Has the sign always been there? Wait, what? Caution, electrified fence. No, that's definitely new. Creepy. How are we gonna get around an electrified fence? Don't worry, I've got this. <laughs> Why did you do that? Paul always says you can figure out what the plan was when you're done. Great, what now? Well, I did my part and established the touching the fence is bad. I'm sure you can handle it from here. I'll supervise. From a safe distance. Whoa, you're a genius. I think that did it. Luca, you never fail to impress. As the glowing windows of the old warehouse came into view, Rollo began to bounce excitedly. Check it out! Dang, Rollo, you weren't exaggerating for once. Was there ever any doubt? This definitely needs investigating. Good thing two ace detectives are on the case. 
bizarre. This is awesome. You got rumble. Did you feel that? What, the excitement in the air? You bet your butt I did. Check out this puddle. That's not normal. And this hose. Aw, oh, man, the door's locked. Try harder. No dice, it won't budge. Oh, well. This dumpster is new, right? I bet it's got stuff in it. I, can, I can't really see what's in here. Who did all of this? My nose is itching. I think I smell some treasure. Are you sure that isn't hazardous waste? Just help me get in. Rollo, it would be my honor to throw you in the trash. Alright, we investigated the Valentine Warehouse with Rollo. Come on, Lady Luck. So, what's in there? Let's see. There's a squishy bag of squish. Wow. A good inch of stagnant sludge. Your natural habitat. Wait, hold the phone. Hold two phones. Check these bad boys out. Are those... Walkie-talkies? Just like Hank Atomic Communicators. Do these actually work? Ground Command to Hank. Atomic. Hank, do you read me? This is Hank Atomic, Ground Command. You're coming in 5x5. Five five. How, um... How are your vital readouts, Hank? I'm getting a little stuffy in here. Requesting assistance for evac. Help is on the way. What was that? Someone's coming. Give me your hand. I'm trying. My hands are covered in squish. Scoot over. I'm coming in. What was that all about? It's coming to dump some sludge. Uh, tell me you saw that. Dude, I don't know what I saw. He's coming back. Get down. Is that a body? Like, I don't want to get real dark here, but that's a body, right? The it's a body bag. Under the weight of the bag. Yeah, see, Luca's having the same thought I'm having. Luca, do you know what separates one of the mill detectives from ace detectives? A ridiculous hat? When the chips are down, ace detectives dig deeper for clues. Well, felt around at the large sack which burdened them. Aha! He snapped off a tag from just within a small zipper opening in the bag. It's some sort of badge or something. What's it say? Phil held the badge up to a faint shaft of light within the dumpster. Dr. Prescott, Deep Engineering. It's a name tag. Who would throw away a bag of full of slimy old name tags? I think it's just one name tag and a bag of full of something else. Okay, okay, okay. I think we should make a break for it. Stay calm, this is no time to panic. I'm not panicking! You're panicking! Whoa, calm down. You don't have to squeeze my hand so hard. Dude, I am not holding your hand. Quit messing around. What other slime-covered hand would be in here? Ah! Ah! I'm beginning to see your, the benefits of your run for your lives plan. Right, we've clearly established that I'm faster than you, so I'll go first. Why not go together? Flaming chicken coop, Luca. I'll make sure the coast is clear. After I go, count to 100. If you hear me yell, run. If you don't hear me yell, run. Actually, either way, haul your ass. Rolo, I'll give you credit. You sure found an eventful way to start our summer. It's what I do. Well, here goes nothing. Luca sat in the dark, tracking the sound of Rolo's footsteps as he ran. One, two, three, 
He pressed his ear to the dumpster wall, straining to hear Rolo's footsteps as they faded away. Fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. He tried not to think about the contents of the dumpster as he counted. Thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven. The thick stench made it hard to breathe. Screw it, that's long enough! Luca carefully lifted the lid and peered out. Nothing. No sign of Rollo. No sign of the man in the yellow suit. Time to haul ass! Luca clambered from the dumpster, stumbling to his knees. He was up like a shot and running, sprinting toward home as fast as he could. Beacon Pines flew by, blurred by the tears that welled up in his eyes. He wouldn't remember getting home at all that night. Throwing his front door open, storming up the stairs to his room and surrendering to sleep almost as abruptly as he hit his pillow. Chapter 3 Finding a Friend The next morning, it was quieter than usual at the breakfast table. Only the sound of silverware and chewing interrupted the awkward silence. I finished jarring a mess of jam last night. Uh-huh. So that's that'll need to get delivered into town today. Okay. So what did you and Rolo get up to yesterday? Uh, nothing interesting. Hello? Calm down. No, of course it was the right thing to do. Start gathering folks. I'll be right there. Are you sure there isn't anything you want to tell me about yesterday? Anything I want to tell you? Not really. We just sort of ran around a bit. Gran's brow furrowed. She let out a long sigh. Her voice was quiet and even. I have to go take care of something. You're staying in this house for the day. Under no circumstances are you to leave. What? If I'm not back by dinner, there's stew in the icebox. But... But nothing. You are to stay here. Understood? Yeah. Say it. I'll stay here till you get back. Good. We're not staying, right? Come on. Oh, and Luca, you left the icebox open yesterday. We're not made of money, you know. I don't really like our Gran. Well, that was strange. Can I leave it open? <laughs> I can! What should we do? Should we go to the garden, maybe? It's the first time where I haven't really known where to go. Or do we just leave the house? Is that what we need to do? Is just leave? A faint electronic sound floated in the air. Is that coming from upstairs? Alright, let's go investigate. Hello? Is anyone there? Ooh, what's this? What's the walkie-talkie? Hello? Rolo, is that you? Over? Strange. Okay. All right, down the stairs we go, I guess. A 
let's go, uh, let's go at the door. Oh, hey, Roxy. If this is about me, uh, accidentally kicking you yesterday. Is Rolo here? No. Look at me, Luca. This is serious. Is Rolo here? No, I haven't seen him since yesterday. Rolo didn't come home last night. What? A pit formed in Luca's stomach. Where was the last place you saw him? Uh, we were playing around in Weep Woods, and then it was late, and we went home. Weep Wood? If he's alive, I'm going to kill that little creep. Is there anything else? Anything that he said? His mouth felt dry. No, we were just messing around. Okay. I need to go let people know to check the woods. You just stay out of trouble. Go see if he's hiding in the library or something. Luca could feel his heart beating in his throat. Rolo. Where are you? All right, well, we're breaking Gran. We're breaking what Gran told us to do because um, Roxy told us to do something else. We're heading for the library, which uh, we know where that is, right? Is this a shortcut somewhere? The road leading to Beacon Pines was long and uninspiring. A sort of natural barrier for the impatient. Oh, okay, that's nothing. Let's go this way. Hey, Bert. Have you seen Rolo? Nope. Though I've mostly been talking to clipboards. They're setting up lots of stuff for the festival. This one this one said he had to process some answers. I told him that was fine. I'll wait right back until right here till he gets back. Howdy, Luca. Hello again, Pete. I'm not Pete, you silly goose. It's Toby. You could have fooled me. Well, hey, it's no problemo. The important thing is we'd love to hear your thoughts. Yeah, I'm getting that impression. We're all part of something special, Luca. And it all starts right here in Beacon Pines. I got Toby it. looked up from the clipboard excitedly. Excitedly. That's right. So how about you start by telling me... Look, no offense, but I've got my own stuff to take care of. Ah, you joker. You're all part of this together. Or we're all part of this together. You'll let us know when you're free to answer a few questions. Not right now, man. I need to go to the library. We really need to get back to work. Just a couple more minutes. If Roxy says she will be here, then she will be here. I just don't see why I'm standing around, doing nothing, and waiting for Roxy. When I could be standing around, doing nothing, and getting paid for it. Come on, Lumi. Roxy needs our help. Ugh. My parents wouldn't listen. No offense, but isn't Rolo always getting into trouble? Something feels different this time. What can we do to help? We need to check where the adults aren't. So I guess it's up to us to check Weep Woods. Our shift ends doesn't end for a couple of hours. We could spend the time making posters. That would be great. I guess. Right. Fitz and I will check Weep Woods. We'll be back later to pick up the posters. I think my dad has a map of Weep Woods. Let's swing by my house and grab it before we head out. All right, here we go. What's this about a missing child? I must stress the situation is completely under control. It just all seems so terrible. And you're sure there's nothing we can do to help? Nonsense, young Mr. Cotter will turn up safe and sound, I'm certain. Just focus on settling in. I trust my sister has supplied you with suitable lodging? Oh yes, Miss Valentine has been more than accommodating. We were just telling our daughter Beck that now, where did she run off to? Probably ran off to find freaking Luca, man. Or Rolo. I'm Luca. Rolo. Alright, I gotta check the library. This is so Kato cute. volunteered at the library okay. during the summers. He wasn't very social, so he'd dedicate each summer to becoming an expert in a single subject making him a reliable source of very particular knowledge. If you were to ask Kato something he didn't know, he'd escape into the dusty old bookshelves and return with just the right thing. 
Hey, Kato. Kato was lost in his reading. Luca crooked his neck to see the title. Introduction to Melatology. Ahem. Oh, hey, Luca, you snuck up on me. Good book? Don't know, just started he it. He gestured to the shelves. I'm really running out of books I haven't read yet. So now it's on to the wonderful world of bees. Turns out bees are pretty cool. For instance, did you know that around 70% of bee species actually live un in underground tunnels? Or that if there are two queens in a hive, they will fight to the death for supremacy? Okay, we got the fight thing. That's interesting, but you haven't seen Roller around recently, have you? Not since yesterday. Keep an eye out for him, okay? Sure thing. I'll see him. I'll see him. You'll be the first to know. Ah, <laughs> uh, stupid puns. All right, well, we did that. Now where to? What sort of monster puts candy behind a locked door? Oh, yeah, Mr. Nuncreed works weird hours sometimes. Of course he does. How about you? When do I work? No, what's your name? Luca Van Horn. You new here? Yep, not by choice. Moved often. Oh, this is Beck. Giving her little time to establish any real connections. What's up, Beck? She would tell you she prefers it that way. I'm looking for my friend Rolo. He didn't come home last night. So he's missing? I guess so. Like, missing, missing? Does that sort of thing happen a lot around here? Luca shifted his feet uncomfortably. Well, that sucks. Yeah. So, I should probably get going. Hey, wait up! What? Beck pulled a coin from her pocket. I'm coming with you. What? So says the unlucky penny. Unlucky? Yep, well, technically it landed on heads. Leave this kid to find his friend alone. But I always do the opposite. Oh, uh, that's kind of like me and Rolo. I guess Rolo is my unlucky penny. That settles it. A person should never be without their unlucky penny. Let's go find him. The name is Beck. Pleasure to meet you, Beck. I suppose I could use some help. Try to keep up. All right, we're off to the woods to see what's up. Joey, have you seen Rolo around? No, sorry, Luca. I've had my eyes in the dirt looking for beetles. I can't seem to find any. He never came home last night. Do you think it's because it's been colder than normal? I don't see what that would have to do anything to do with Rolo. No, the beetles! Do you think the temperature confused their circadian rhythm or something? Who's to say? I'm no beetologist. Just keep eyes out for him, would ya? Of course! Dang, they boarded up the way in. Luca felt a chill as he approached Beck. Her eyes were locked on the strange green liquid. The nearby grass was coated in a fine layer of frost. Uh, is this sort of thing normal around here? Because puddles of glowing ooze are definitely not what I expected from this place. I have no idea what that stuff is. Well, the next obvious step is science. And what does science suggest? Poke it with a stick! Luca watched as Beck dipped a broken tree branch into the goo. Beck's eyes widened as flowers grew from the dead wood. First small buds, which quickly bloomed into vibrant petals. What the? Cool! As quickly as they had grown, the flowers began to shrivel and turn gray. Well, that's weird. Beck dropped the stick with a grunt of disgust. Okay. So the science tells us this gunk is weird as hell. Uh, yeah, it seems dangerous. Hey, Tish, look what the cat dragged in. Yup. I don't have time for this right now, Iggy. 
Ah, don't say things like that. It hurt Trish's Tish's feelings. Ain't that right, Tish? Yup. She looks fine to me. Why, hello. I don't think we've been properly introduced. Iggy's the name. This is my compatriot, Trish. Yup. You probably heard of us. Can't say I have. I'll forgive you just this once on account of you being new around here. Why would you hang out with this dud? Oh, he seems pretty alright. Iggy, why do you have to be so... you? Has he even told you that his parents skipped out on him? Shut up. It's true. They got tired of having such a pathetic kid and left him. Iggy, I'm only going to say this one time. Don't. Talk. About. My family. <laughs> well, look who's grown a backbone, backbone now that a girl's around. First his pops croaked, then his mom finally couldn't take it anymore and bounced. We're gonna fight. I'm gonna use that fight. Towards Luca, his sneer lit by the glowing puddle. Beck could see tears welling in Luca's eyes, his fists clenched. Some things about Beacon Pines were very different from the city. But a bully from a hayseed town is really no different from a city bully. Beck took a deep breath and thought. <laughs> Where are you going with tickles? Well, time to bust out the tickles. Hey, Tish, want to see something cool? Yep. Check it. Beck lunged forward and began to tickle under Tish's arms. <laughs> what the? Tish, is she tickling you? Yep. Hey, <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. Tears began to form in Tish's eyes as she gasped for breath between gales of laughter. Yep, yep, yep. Beck redoubled her efforts until Tish finally had had enough. <laughs> yep. What just happened? She seems nice. Sorry for the interruption. I think you were just threatening Eddie's us. eyes darted around, a realization dawning on his face that he was now outnumbered. Yeah, you are. You better watch it, you little punk. I just remembered I have somewhere to be. Mm-hmm. See you around, new kid. Iggy kicked at the puddle before making his escape. Whoa! What a little creep. Uh, Beck, I think you got a little ooze in Beck your hair. Beck shook the ooze out of her hair as best as she could. Is that, is it bad? It depends what your feelings about having a more mature, refined look. Oh, gosh. Chapter four. Oh, a brand new chapter. The best policy. Luca paused for a moment, catching his breath. He'd only just met Beck, and somehow he already managed to drag her into this mess. Hopefully he could make it up to her, but finding Rolla was his primary concern. Okay, um, chapter four already. Where do we go to? Can I go this way? I cannot. I can go this way, though. Oh, it's green sludge. Don't want to walk through the green sludge. Property of Valentine Fertilizer Company. Looks old. Oh, I can't go back there. Alright, uh, I guess there's nothing to do, but... Luca, what the hell are you doing out here? And why did a kid with gray hair just run past us in a panic? Roxy and Fitz looked drained. It was clear they'd spent all day searching. That's Beck. I don't care who she is. What happened? We were just helping looking for Rolo. Luca, 
I need you to start telling me the truth. Roxy's temper could often be dismissed as the impatience of an older sibling. But this was the most intense Luca had ever seen her. Her eyes were wild her and unfocused, looking straight through Luca. I sometimes forget that I don't need to read this part. We're running out of time. In a torrent of rambled words and tears, Luca broke down. Rolo and I weren't just playing in the Weep Woods yesterday. We were investigating lights at the old Valentine warehouse, but someone was there in a strange suit, and was we hid in the dumpster and had a heavy bag dropped on us. And I think it was a body. And so we ran, but we got split up. And I ran home. And it's all my fault. And now my best friend may never come back. Wow. Just... Wow. Roxy, still exhausted and angry, softened briefly as her eyes hunted the ground in thought. With a determined sigh, she looked up at Luca. It's not your fault, Luca. Rolo's gonna be okay, I promise. Roxy drew herself up. I'm gonna fix this. Luca, go home. But I wanna help. This is too dangerous for a kid. I can't just sit around. I have to do something. Roxy tried to think of the safest place to send Luca. You go back to that little treehouse you two like to play in. Wait there in case Rolo shows up. Sound like a plan? Luca wiped his cheeks and gave a quick nod. You did the right thing telling me the truth. Now scoot. You really believe his story? What other option do we have? I think things have been strange around here leading up to the festival. My dad has been acting weird lately. Well, weirder than normal. Looking into the puddle, Roxy rubbed her arms to warm up. Why is it so cold here? This place gives me the willies. Okay, so we have to wait at the treehouse in case Rolo shows up. Alright, let's move. Let's move out of here. Um. Mr. Nuncree jumped with a start. Whoa, don't sneak up on an old fella like that. Sorry. Who are you talking to? What? Luca motioned to the phone booth. Oh, no. I was just checking because I thought I heard it ring. But the dang thing never does, of course. Yeah, I've never seen anyone use it, really. The whole thing is a waste of money, if you ask me. Any word from Rolo yet? Not yet. Long time for a boy to lose his way. Rolo knows those woods too well to get lost. I suppose you're right. Silly boy antics have this whole town worried sick. Antics? We all know Rolo likes to play his little pranks. You think this is a prank? What other possible explanation could there be? He's not playing a prank, and he didn't get lost. Someone took him, I know it. How would you know that? Unless... Luca, is there something else you, that you know? Mr. Nuncree gently placed one of his substantial hands on Luca's shoulder. Dang it, boy. If there's something you know, something that could help your friend, you need to tell folks. Luca peered up at Mr. Nuncreed. Kind eyes warmed a stern face. There was a deeper emotion hiding beneath it all. It was subtle, but Luca could sense something eating away at him. There was a shame lurking behind shame. his eyes. Okay. There was a shame looking behind those a eyes. Deep sadness. If Mr. Nuncreed was that worried about Rollo, maybe he could help. Yesterday, Rollo and I were messing around at the old Valentine warehouse. Mr. Nuncreed raised an eyebrow. Both of you? You were with Rollo when he went missing? Not exactly. I was hiding in the dumpster. The dumpster? What were you doing in there? At first, we were just looking around. Then, someone in a strange yellow suit came and dumped something on us. 
We both got scared and ran. That was the last I saw him. You got scared by some garbage? Well, that's why you don't go sulk skulking in someone's dumpster. But it wasn't garbage. I think... I think it was a body. I'm sure it was just some trash. No, there was a name tag. It said Deep Engineering. Mr. Nuncreed's shoulders slumped. I wish you wouldn't have said that. A deep sigh bellowed from his chest. Why did you have to? I tried, Luca. God knows I tried to keep you Luca safe. Luca attempted to take a step back, but Nuncreed's hand clamped down on his shoulder. Is Nuncreed, Nuncreed the guy in the suit? But you Javan Horns just can't help yourselves, can you? We were all so close, so close to being done with this. With a firm shove, Nuncreed manhandled Luca into the phone booth. What are you doing? It's out of my hands now. The door latched shut with a mechanical hiss. Shoot. As Luca pounded the glass, the floor dropped from under his feet. The inside of the phone booth was now a loose capsule plummeting at gravity's whim. Luca winced and pressed his hands to the walls. As he braced for impact, the capsule hurried to a surprisingly smooth stop. He felt a cold rush of air and opened his eyes with hesitance. Two large figures in hazmat suits occluded his view. Luca heard the deep, resigned voice of Mr. Nuncreed over an intercom. He knows too much. The end. Okay. Well, we got the end again. Wait. No. Oh. <laughs> Wait, no. This isn't the end. I know there's still much more. Somehow this went wrong. Okay, let's try something else. Okay, well, we only have... We only have shame. We only have change. We know we got... Or at least we assume we got this one right, but we don't have other options. And this one was the one that didn't matter. So we're going to have to go back here and act strange. Well, it's time to bust out the strange. Well, time to bust out the strange. All right, Luca. Looks like you need a little mud bath. What's wrong with you, new kid? We're about to pound your friend. Beck stared in silence. <laughs> the only sign of life being the twitch of an eye. It's weird when people don't talk. Yep. Stop being a weirdo. Uh, hello? Are you some kind of wackadoo? Makes sense. Wackadoo's traveling packs, eh, dud? At the sight of Iggy taunting back, something in Lucas snapped. Iggy smirk shifted to a look of shock as Luca launched himself into his stomach. Go, Luca. Iggy's clothes were drenched in the glowing ooze. You jerk! My clothes are ruined! I'm gonna... His voice began to slur as he struggled to get up. Okay, we got a new charm that we could maybe use on Mr. Nuncree. I don't f feel so good. Elf? I'm sorry, I just... Oh, shoot! Yup! Okay. That was intense. Iggy's gonna be okay, right? Nothing about it seems okay. The person at the warehouse. The strange ooze and what it did to Iggy. 
Was Rolo caught up in all of this? We have to find Rolo. You took the words out of my mouth. Whoa there, little buddies. You startled me. What in the dickens are you up to in this part of town? We were just help looking for Rolo. You haven't heard the good news? Rolo showed up safe and sound a bit ago. Really? So where was he? It's funny, really. He just got a little turned around in the woods. They can be disorienting. Dis this guy seems like a creep. It can't. They can be disorienting, you know? I'm starting to get that impression. Rolo's at his house right now getting some well-deserved rest. Oh, wow, that's a relief. You two should scurry along before you get lost yourselves. Yeah, come on, Beck. I can't wait to introduce you to Rolo. Oh, that reminds me. Luca, your grandmother was looking for you. She was? She was worried sick. You should march straight home. I guess... Beck, your folks might be getting worried too. I'll walk you home. I need to talk with Nellie about work anyways. Beck glanced toward Luca. I guess all's well that ends well. I'll introduce you to Rolo tomorrow. Sure. Glad he's okay. Rolo was safe. A wave of relief washed over Luca, which was quickly replaced by a sense of dread. Gran is going to kill me. If he hurried, he might just make it home before sundown. Chapter 4 A brand new start to Chapter 4. Our harvest One that we awaits. don't die. Luca took a deep breath and gingerly opened the door, stealing himself for Gran's wrath. Gran? I'm home. Everything's fine. Gran? Okay, where's Gran? Gran? I know I wasn't supposed to go anywhere. I was just helping look for Rolo. Is Gran missing now too? Gran's going to be missing. Gran! Roxy came over. She was worried about him. So I figured you wouldn't mind if I helped look for him. It turns out Rolo is safe and sound. I just realized the ice box is still open and the water's still on. <laughs> Luca was alone. The house was empty. So Gran's not back yet. I guess that's a good thing. Nothing to do now but sleep, I guess. But Luca where's Gran? by the pond, listening to small waves lap against a rock. His father sat in a folding chair in front of him. Without turning, he spoke. Why don't you grab me some nice bait? Sure thing, Dad. Luca hopped over to the tackle box and popped open the lid. Inside was a rolling, buzzing mass. We're fishing with bees? Luca's father gave a warm chuckle. Well, you catch more fish with bees than honey. Pick us out a good one. Luca closed his eyes and plucked out a bee. He could feel its wings struggle between his finger and thumb. Holding it at arm's length, he hurried over. His father deftly baited the hook and examined his work. Interesting choice. With a practiced flick of the wrist, the line buzzed in a graceful arc. The water accepted it without a splash or ripple. The wrong choice, but I respect it. began to freeze over. 
Sometimes we gotta make the wrong choice before we can make it right. Kind of the theme of this book, ain't it not? Pallid ice propagated across the still surface with an alarming speed. Luca scrambled back as the ground beneath him turned cold. Dad, I don't understand. Sorry, kiddo. Understanding isn't always part of the deal. The relentless ice shot through the fishing line toward his father. Dad, look out! His father casually wound the reel. None of it's your fault, you know. Never was. Dad, we have to go! Luca grabbed his father's shoulders, trying to pull him away. Please, you, you have to run! The ice crackled as it spread across his father's hands. That's the thing about fishing, Luca. His chest began to crystallize. You toss your hook in, and you never know what you're gonna pull out. A shock of searing cold ran up Luca's arms. He gave one last desperate tug. The chair tipped backwards in a single frozen mass. Luca tried to stop the momentum, but it was too late. He watched the icy form of his father slam into the hard ground, shattering into a thousand pieces that crowded around his feet. Dad, I don't understand. What does all this mean? The gentle rustle of leaves was the only reply. Luca's eyes struggled to focus on the walkie-talkie. Rolo? Faintly, he could hear Rolo amongst the noise. Luca! Rolo, is that you? Luca! There? Rolo, it's the middle of the night. Luca, thank goodness. Listen, I don't know how long this thing will work down here. Down here? Rolo's voice was coming through more clearly now. But some words were still just static. Listen to me. Someone grabbed me yesterday. What, the man in the hazmat suit? It was... Took me to some sort of... I think I'm underground. Underground? Are you okay? Kinda. They seemed more interested in... For now, at least. Mr. Kerr said you made it back home safe. Kerr? No, Trust. Uh, he's. Hold on, someone's coming. Signal went silent. Rolo? Rolo, where are you? Luca held still, waiting for a response. His pounding heartbeat marking the passage of time. Okay, I think they're gone. We're getting worse. I can barely hear Rolo's you. His voice began to fade. Losing signal. Not much time. Mission control. You need to... The treehouse. The treehouse! The signal died for good. What was he trying to say about the treehouse? What's at the treehouse? The antenna! He wants me to use the antenna in the treehouse to get a better signal. Rolo, you're a genius! Luca grabbed the walkie-talkie and sprinted to the treehouse. 
Okay, hook up the walkie-talkie to the radio in the treehouse. It is light, but that doesn't mean Duca we can't go... a group of footsteps approaching. He dashed behind the bushes to avoid being spotted. So, we all understand our roles. You can count on me. I still think we need more time. This wasn't the original plan. Mr. Tolliver paused, shifting his eyes to one side. We're all in danger now. I, for one, refuse to sit idly by while that danger persists. There we go, we got the refuse badge. Charm. Hiram, you just keep your wits about Mr. you. Mr. Tolliver took one long, quiet breath. You're right. You can count me in. Count on me. I just wish we would have made the deal with. Er I wish we just could have made that deal with Eris Valentine. Her resources would have still come in handy. As I said, I have no time to contact her after your call this morning. Plans change. How is Luca holding up? He's fine. We shouldn't lose sight of the fact that this is all. I know very well what all of this is for. We have no choice. Operation Sparkplug has a new objective. Are we in agreement? The three shared a determined look. Good. We'll reconvene after the festival. Gran. Why are you meeting with Mrs. Fratelli and Mr. Tolliver late at night? Hey, Luca! Ah! Don, you scared me! How long have you been there? Oh, just a few minutes. Earlier today, I saw Mr. Trolliver and your gran enter the diner together. When my shift at the newsstand was over, they still hadn't left. So I used the greatest tool out of any investigative reporter. Time. When they left, I tailed them here. What do you think they're up to? Whatever it is, they seem organized and determined. They mentioned the festival. Yeah, I heard that too. Has your gran been doing anything different recently? Anything strange? She got a phone call this morning and rushed out the door. A call from Hiram Tolliver, it seems. She was either furious or terrified. Or both. Luca, be careful out there. I think we might be in the middle of the scoop of a lifetime. I will. Aren't you coming out? Nah, I'm go gonna stake out here for a bit longer. See you, Luca. Alright, well, let's move onward because this is actually turning into a somewhat interesting tale. And when I say somewhat interesting, I mean, like, pretty interesting. Let's see what these people are up to. I did it. I changed the sign. Splendid. Did anyone see you? I don't believe so. You were right. It was simple enough to just rearrange the letters. Odd choice for a prank, though. In situations such as these, odd is good. Boys shared a mischievous grin. I can't wait for everyone to see the big reveal. It should be quite memorable. Let's make ourselves scarce for now. What sign did they change? Oops. All right, we're on a mission. Oh, so we hooked up the walkie talkie the radio and the trios. Rolo! Rolo, are you there? I'm at the treehouse now, Rolo. Mr. Kerr said you were alright. What happened out there? Dang it, Rolo, where are you? There. Luca could only see a cloaked shape behind the rocket. I've got weapons in here. So you'd better come out right now. He strained to hear as a muffled voice began. Weapons. How could you hurt something that's already dead? Fear gripped Luca's throat. 
Who are you? What? You don't recognize me? I guess I don't even recognize myself anymore. Luca stared at the ground for a moment, trying to place the dampened voice. The figure shifted slowly from behind the rocket, revealing itself to Luca. I'm a monster. And now they hunt me like the beast I am. Iggy. Luca reached over empathetically. Iggy's tone jolted to dejected anger. Don't touch me! This is all your fault! Luca slumped to the ground, overwhelmed by guilt. I'm so sorry. I... I didn't mean to. I lost control. So you couldn't control yourself for a second. And I get to be like this forever? There must be a way to fix this. Oh, you going to be my savior? Perfect little Luca saves the day. With his positive attitude and power of friendship. I... None of this matters. There's no time. They're after me. They chased me all through Weep Wood. I only came in here to hide. Hide from who? Who's after you? Luca, Luca! Rolo? It's not safe, Luca! Rolo, where are you? The treehouse! I'm at the treehouse, Rolo. Where are you? No, Luca, the, Luca, the treehouse isn't safe. They said they were going to the treehouse. I was trying to tell you to stay away from the treehouse. Who said they're going to the treehouse? The clipboards! What did I tell you? Those perennial harvest wackadoos are after me. They've been chasing me, yelling questions at me. What sort of questions? They were saying the same stuff they always do, but it's different now. Less asking, more threatening. We're gonna figure this out, Iggy. Yeah, well... Thanks. Hello? Is anyone present in the arboreal domicile? Crap, they found me. Luca, what's happening? Don't panic. You stay here. I'll see what they want. The heck? Hello, Mr. Van Horn. We would love to hear your thoughts. Do you have time for an informal chat? We will be brief. Your time is valuable to us. Uh... Be down in just a second. Of course, of course, of course, of course. What the heck is going on? We have a problem. Luca, you gotta get out of there. Who's out there? It is them. Yeah, it's the clipboards. A bunch of them. How many? Maybe all of them? And yeah, you were right. They are saying the same stuff, but with a creepy knob cranked to ten. Might young Iggy be present? We would love to hear his thoughts. Run! He slumped to his knees. I don't know what to do. I'm just so tired. Luca, what do we do? Luca grabbed the walkie-talkie and headed for the window. Follow my lead. Luca and Iggy climbed up the back of the treehouse to its roof, where Rolo had constructed his MCDC. The Mission Control Defense Cannon. From behind the crowd of clipboards, William Kerr strode forward. A warm smile on his face. Iggy, there you are. You gave us all a heck of a scare. Go away. Just leave me alone. Oh, I'm sorry, Iggy, but no can do. Don't worry, though. We're here to help. Help? That's why you're chasing me? Luca, you can talk some sense into your pal here. Just look at him. He's not well. What's wrong with him? What did the gunk do to him? Well, that's a pretty honking big question, Luca. All you need to know is that he's sick. He's real sick, Luca. I just need you to let us up there and take care of him. You told me Rolo was okay, that he was back at his place resting. He is. Poor fellow just got a little lost. That's a lie. That's a harmful thing to say, Luca. I thought we were buddies. Why? Because he let you ramble on like a wackadoo? Nobody likes you, you creep. Her smile faltered. Why don't you pop on down here so we can have a face-to-face? -face? Yelling like this is going to give us all a heck of a sore throat. And who wants that? 
Lucas' grip tightened on the MCDC. What did you do to Rolo, you liar? Well, shucks, Luca. The only teeny tiny fib I told you was that he was at home. He is resting and he's perfectly safe. For now, at least. What happens to him next is up to you, Luca. Look around. You're in quite the pickle and I'm the only person in the whole wide world who can help you. You get to decide how this ends. Luca's mind raced. He was caught in a trap. What do you do when there's no hope? Iggy wiped his cheeks with a sleeve. What are you gonna do, Luca? We're gonna fight. Luca drew himself up. It's the only option we have, right? Take the only option they had left. He swung the mission control defense cannon around, aiming it confidently at the smirking face of William Kerr. Hey, Mr. Kerr! Luca summoned his most insolent demeanor. Rollo sends his regards. Hey! That was uncalled for, more than a little rude. And just plain unsanitary. Luca, I really did think we were good pals. What a shame that it's come to this. Kerr turned his back on the two boys. End this. With a nonchalant wave of the hand, he made his exit. As the clipboards began to slowly advance on the treehouse, Luca looked to Iggy with resignation in his eyes. The end. Oh, okay. That escalated quickly. Maybe discretion was the better part of valor here. Let's put a pin in this for now. Looks like we need to decide what we're going to do. Only one option. Only one option. We've used both those options. We can come back all the way to here and struggle instead of change. Because that's the only one we have right now. We haven't earned any others. Um, or we're going to have to talk to more people. But let's uh, let's go back here and struggle and see what changes. Okay, uh, so we're going to go here, I guess, and we're going to do... Oops, and we're going to go back here, and we're going to try struggle. It's the only thing I got. Otherwise, we're going to have to walk around and try to figure something out. This is a story about struggle. This is a story about struggle. Luca could hear a machine humming somewhere nearby. He felt around wildly, searching for something, anything that could help. His hands found a hard object, maybe a tile? He yanked it free, lifting the cold stone. Let. Me. Go! Luca swung the tile as hard as he could at the shape that still held fast to his leg. He heard the crack of glass as the stone hit the assailant's mask. With a muffled yelp, the hand let go. Luca was free and scrambled to the door. He never looked back once on the long run home. Chapter 3 And <laughs> now we're all the way back at Chapter 3 again. Everything's fine. The next morning, it was quieter than usual at the breakfast table. Only the sound of silverware and chewing interrupted the awkward silence. What I do like is that you're you're getting different parts of the story, but then going back and you still have that all in your mind, which makes this very, very interesting. I finished jarring a mess of jam last night. Uh -huh. So I'll need to get that delivered into town today. Okay, so what did you and Rolo get up to yesterday? Oh, Rolo had things to do, so I just sort of poked around town. I've set the jam down by the front door. There's two batches to drop off. Mm-hmm. One for Mr. Tolliver at the Bag and Wag. So there you go, deliver jam to Mr. Tolliver. Another is for Miss Fratelli, Fratelli at the diner. Oh, and Mr. Nuncreed. He said he wanted some more. 
I suspected as much. Yes, he seems to have taken a particular interest in my jam. There are some extras in the basket for that enthusiastic gentleman. Just make sure Fratelli and Tolliver get the ones on top. No problem. Off with you now while the day is still young. All right, let's go deliver this stuff. Hello? It's Juniper Hartford. Before you hang up, just hear me out. I have a business proposition. The simple matter is we both have the same problem that needs solving. Very well. We can meet tonight. So everything's a little bit different. Alright, we got the package. Let's mosey. Oh, here's Rollo. Okay. Sorry about yesterday. Roxy can be so annoying. But good news. No more boring chores for me today. Did you make it to the old Valentine warehouse? So, what did you find? Give me the dirt. Something happened. There was someone else there. What? Who was it? Was it aliens? I knew it would be aliens. No. Zombies? No. Alien zombies? What else could it possibly be? Rolo, you got it. We, I've got to deliver these into town first. We can catch up after that. Ooh, is that a whole thing? Sounds like a whole thing. Yeah, we shouldn't talk about it here. Meet me at the treehouse tonight. I'm not sure what this treehouse is that you speak of. <sighs> Meet me at mission control. Roger that, space cadet. Friggin' Rolo. I do love Rolo. He's pretty dope. Glad to see he's okay, at least in this timeline of events. Okay. The bag and wag. <laughs> the bag and wag and the diner. Um. Town hall. Oh, I don't want to talk to you, old lady. Oh, maybe I will. Anger from the past, mistakes not yet made, and a glimmering hope for the future. He carried them all in equal parts everywhere he went. Oh heavens, what a burden to bear. Alright, nothing. I thought maybe we could get ourselves another uh, charm. I think charms are always valuable to have, so anytime we can pick one up, we want to try to do it. Okay, um... What the heck is this diner? Hold up, we're going back, and I'm going south, I guess. I guess. I guess. Oh, okay, here we go. Build a bulb. Here's the one guy. Huddled at his counter, Hiram Tolliver was meticulously shining apples. Meticulously shining apples. More accurately, Hiram Tolliver was meticulously shining one apple. Hello? Ah! With a yelp, Mr. Tolliver fumbled the apple, flailing at the air as it fell. Oh, sorry. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Ah, no bother, he no bother. He leaned forward and lowered his voice. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. I see you have something for me. Yeah, Grant had some jam I'm supposed to give you. He leaned in a bit further. Uh -oh. Jam? Yeah, these ones on top. She wrote your name on Mr. him. Mr. Tolliver leaned back, speaking loud enough for anyone to hear. He's acting very weird, isn't he? Ah, yes! The jam! Thank you so much for delivering this jam he to me. He forward and snapped up the jars of jam, giving Luca a little wink. <laughs> Obviously, it's not jam. I shall put it in my store shelves post-haste. Okay, I should finish my deliveries. Of course. Of course. He leaned in for a final whisper. Of course. <laughs> Alright, where's the diner? I feel like I saw the diner once before, but like... Where is it? I'm going in the History Museum. Sharper Valentine, a celebration of excellence. We all know Beacon Pines is a great town. What you may not know is great towns grow from mighty roots. And that is why you cannot tell the story of Beacon Pines without telling the story of one Sharper Valentine. Young Sharper's keen intellect and strong all fiber led to a grand vision. 
a vision of a community dedicated to a better tomorrow. In his own words, a better tomorrow is within our grasp, but it requires a singular mind to harness it. Lucky for us, he decided to grow that vision here in Beacon Pie. And how does one grow a better tomorrow? With fertilizer, of course. Valentine's Fertilizer Company became the lifeblood of a town yearning for purpose. But then tragedy struck, a scientific experiment gone wrong. An accident which took Sharper away from us far too soon. To this day, we struggle to pick up the pieces. But one foul harvest isn't enough to stop the people of Beacon Pines. The spirit of Sharper Valentine lives on. It lives in the hearts of everyone with a dream for a better tomorrow. Together, we will follow his example and grow a bountiful future. Paid for by the Valentine family and the Valentine Fertilizer Company Reverence Fund. That was unhelpful. <laughs> How do you keep the ice cream cold? We keep them on ice. Where do you get the ice from? I don't know. Somewhere cold. How do they keep somewhere cold? Cold. Look, Bert. Do you want some ice cream or not? Nah, I'm good. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of funny. That's kind of funny. Sometimes I don't know why I can interact with certain things. Oh yeah, I think the diner's up here. It's like, I know I've seen the diner somewhere. Oh, well, maybe this isn't the diner. Where the heck is this person? Ah, there's the diner, but hold up. Mr. Wilder, I trust you have time Paris to chat. Valentine, oldest of Sharper Valentine's children and heir to the Valentine fortune, had a way of making questions seem like demands. Certainly. What seems to be the Mr. problem? Mr. Wilder had learned to assume that if he was hearing from Eris, it was because she had taken issue with something he had put in the paper. I couldn't help but notice that the front page of this morning's paper was consumed with stories of the silly festival. Well, yes, that is the news of the day. But there was no mention of the museum, nor the foundation through which it was endowed. I'm sorry, Mrs. Valentine. My readers are much more interested in the town's future rather than any one family in particular. Huh. <laughs> There was a time, Mr. Wilder, when the goings-on of my family was the only thing this town cared about. Well, things change, ma'am. And you know, change is dangerous. If you finish that thought, I will make that monocle a permanent fixture of your anatomy. My apologies. Good day, Miss Valentine. Did I give you the impression this conversation was finished? Mr. Wilder averted his gaze and began to polish his monocle. Well, good day, Mr. Wilder. One seems upset, but here we are. Here's the, uh, what's this? Oh, it's a newspaper stand. <laughs> hey, Don. Ugh. Hey, Don. Hey, Aluka, what's Don up? Don had dreams of becoming a big time reporter. At night, she searched for the story that could be her big break. By day, she hawked papers at the newsstand. Ugh. They got you on jam delivery, eh? Yep. Hey, Don, have you noticed anything weird around town lately? What sort of weird things? Stuff going on in the old Valentine building. Hmm. You might say I've heard some things. I'm working on a story about it right now. So what's going on? Can't say quite yet. I still need to follow up on a few leads. Keep me in the loop, okay? Sure thing. Have you seen the new kid around yet? New kid? Yeah, came in from the big city. Her parents both got jobs here. But get this, one of them is working for William Kerr in the Perennial Festival. Harv Festival. And the other is working for Eris Valentine. And? The Valentines resent Beacon Pine's past. Perennial Harvest has positioned itself as this town's future. 
Must make for some interesting dinner table conversations. I can imagine. All right, that's good to know. Into the diner we go. Well, if it isn't my favorite little jam runner. Hey, Mrs. Fratelli. Look at you. She leaned forward. She leaned and, forward and Oh, seat. I don't need to read that. You're all skin and bones. If your grand's not feeding you, she is. It's just... I understand. You know, I thought your mama had a cook back in the day. You might not even remember, but you and her used to help out in the diner. See that picture over there? That's you helping your mama back in the day. So cute, running around in your little apron, taking orders. <sighs> the whole situation just breaks my heart what happened to Eleanor. We got a new thing, break. I've got a feeling she's out there somewhere, yearning to be with you again. A few things in this world can keep a mother from her son. shifted the basket uncomfortably. Oh yes, let's Mrs. see here. Mrs. lifted the cloth and inspected the jam. Ah, they even have the, my name on them. How she thoughtful. lifted out her jars of jam. Then tell your grand hello from me, Luca. Will do. Okay, so we've delivered the jam. If I could just be left a young, lo alone, young Mr. Van Horn. Oh, sure. Sorry to bother you. It's just that. Mr. Kerr has asked me to make the opening speech at the festival. Being mayor and all, you might expect me to be a charismatic speaker. The truth is, I'm terribly nervous. I really don't think I'm cut out for this sort of thing. Cut out for being mayor or for public speaking? Both, I suppose. I never really chose any of this. It's more of a duty to my family, for our legacy. Sounds like a heavy burden. As for the festival, just speak from your heart. I'm sure it'll be great. All right, we gotta go find Mr. Nun Creed or whatever his name is, and we know he's a bad man. He's a bad, bad man. That Mr. Nun Creed. He looks so nice, though. Got some jam for you, Mr. Nun Creed. Luca, you seem chipper. Well, aside from being on delivery duty, it's a Mr. nice day. Mr. Creed eyed Luca for a moment, then nodded in agreement. I suppose it is. So, do you want your jam? Oh, right. Usually, Juniper drops us off herself. I guess she's busy today. Anyway, this is my last delivery for the day. Oh, in that Nun case... Creed snatched the basket from Luca. I'll hold on to the basket until the next time I see your grand. <laughs> oh, man. Here comes the new kid. Hey, you. Anchovies or pineapple? What? Don't think. Just answer. Pineapple? Why? How old are you? Twelve. Perfect. Follow me. Who are you? Anyone ever tell you you ask too many questions? Just try to keep up, okay? What just happened? Well, off I go. Hey, what a crazy coincidence. Here's my new friend I was just telling you about. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, we just hit it off. Oh, really? Get this. His favorite pizza topping in the whole world is pineapple. Oh, um, and what is your new little friend's name? Luke locked eyes with Luca. The look on her face was equal parts expectant and desperate. Luca Van Horn, nice to meet you. I'm Nellie and this is Ilona. We're Beck's parents. Beck gave Luca a quick nudge. Oh yeah, Beck told me all about you. I feel, it really feels like we've known each other for years. So you both can stop obsessing about me making friends. Oh, darling, we never doubted you. It's just that for children with fewer than five close friends, the probability of a stunted development doubles. Well, one down, four to go, I guess. What Nelly means is that we just want this move to be as easy on you as possible. You can relax. A friend has been befriended. This is calls for a celebration. Luca, you must join us for dinner tonight. Dinner? 
Wow, another coincidence. I actually already asked him, and he said he would love to. It's just wonderful. In that case, we should pick up some groceries. You two don't get into too much trouble now. Oh, back. Oh, back. Wow, I can't believe that worked. Thanks a ton. You're welcome. I owe you one. My moms are great and all, but they can be a bit much sometimes. Our house is a little cottage next to that big mansion place. Wait, you live on the Valentine Estate? Yeah, that's the spot. Meet me by their big creepy gate. Don't be late. Or I'm back to the square one on this whole friend grift. Great, see you there. Alright, meet back at the big creepy gate. I guess that's all we got to do, so we might as well just do it. So it doesn't seem like this world is overly large. Who's this? Good morning, Jeff. Uh, what's so good about it? Another day further down the tubes, if you ask me. Come on now, it's not all bad. The festival is coming up. Huh, the festival. Old man Valentine used to put on Kakami's shindig all the time. And where did that get us? Well, it's Perennial Harvest putting on this one. And they're doing it for the whole town. As far as I see it, the difference between our old Valentine company and this new Perennial Harvest Jeff outfit... dug through his pockets for a bit. ...is the difference between this empty soup can and this brown banana. Uh, but those are both garbage. Exactly. Okay, well, uh... <laughs> exactly. All right, we're going to the Valentine Mansion. All right, we met Beck at the Creepy Gate. So who lives, who all lives in this house? Eris and Gus Valentine grew up there, and Solomon moved in a few years back. The creepy little kid in the vest? That sounds like the one. So just three people live in that huge thing? I bet a bunch of shady stuff happens all the time in a place like that. Not really, the Valentines pretty much keep to themselves. So it's empty and boring? Pretty much. What a waste. My mom says it used to be way busier back before Sharper died. Before the fowl harvest. Oh, that's like the fifth time someone mentioned this fowl harvest thing. And you all use the same ominous tone. Eventually, you're going to explain to me how that harvest got all fouled up. But we can't keep my parents waiting anymore. This way. Most kids would have just ditched me by this point. Why are you still here? You look like you could use some help. You know what, Luca? You're not so bad. Let's get through this as simply as possible. Just eat, smile, and nod. Fun. Great. Whatever you do, don't bring up their work. I think I can handle Beck that. took a long breath, then gave a firm nod. Here goes nothing. Chapter 4. And there we go. Chapter 4. Dinner with the Moodwills. Ilona Moodwill was worried about change. A gardener at heart, she understood the necessity of change, relied on it even. But there was a difference between the controlled world of her plants and this cluttered cottage in a strange town. Almost done. Nellie was a blur of activity, digging through boxes. Sorry, love. Couldn't find the dishes. We'll have to make do with paper plates. Dinner went by without much conversation. As she watched Beck and Luca finish up their pizza, Ilona let herself relax into the chair. The things she cared about were still here. Nellie finally had the job of her dreams. Beck was beginning to take root. Ilona's task was simply to tend to them. She could do that. So, Luca, tell us a bit about yourself. Where do you live? Oh, uh, I live with my grandma, over on the other side of the river. Your grandma? Where are your parents at? Beck, manners. It's all right. My dad passed away in an accident at the fertilizer plant six years back. Oh, dear. My mom's been missing for a few months now. Like, missing, missing? His eyes were fixed to his plate, pushing a chunk of pineapple around with his finger. 
Molly was the one who eventually broke the silence. Luca, how did you like the pizza? Oh, it was good. Very good. Normally, we'd put more effort into dinner. Luna nervously gestured toward the boxes. We aren't fully settled in, and Beck hasn't mentioned that it's your favorite. I'm sorry, are we just skipping the part where he said his mom was missing? Beck! I'm sorry, Luca. This move was has us a little Luca tired. wiped his face with his sleeve. No, it's fine. So Beck said that you moved here for work. Beck gave Luca a swift kick under the table. Ow! I mean, what brought you to Beacon Pines? Oh, you were right the first time. We're here for work. Nellie won't tell you this, but she's a brilliant chemist. I don't know about brilliant, but I do love it. She's brilliant. Perennial Harvest just made her the newest lead researcher of deep engineering. She makes it sound more impressing, impressive than it is. Deep engineering? What the? I'm just happy I get to make a difference in the world. Perennial Harvest is at the forefront of evolving agriculture into something more useful than sprinkling water and ex excrement on the ground. Luca glanced over to Beck. She seemed to be holding her breath. What Nellie means, Luca, is that there are different ways to grow plants. Yes, some people talk to their plants and hope for the best, and some people happily leave their job to allow loved ones to pursue their dream. You swore Beck you didn't! her fist into the table. Perhaps harder than she intended. Hey, Luca! How about some dessert? I actually have to meet my friend Rolo Luca soon. outside to gauge the time. The sky was darker than he expected, filled with ominous clouds. Looks like there's a storm brewing. I should get going. Oh, I didn't think there was any rain in the almanac. Yeah, almanacs aren't that useful around here. Luca wiped his mouth one last time with his napkin and started to get up. Thank you all for the pizza. It really was good. See you at the festival, Beck. Wait up. I'll walk you home. Surprised, Luca turned around. He knew Rollo could be prickly around new people. But Beck seemed cool. Rollo would warm up to her eventually. Probably. Alright, we get to choose another word here. Uh, the clouds began to... break. Luca began to respond, but the sky answered for him as the clouds above began to break, revealing patches of star-filled summer night. Moonlight filtered down, shimmering in the treetops. Sure, you can meet Rolo. You're not going home? No, I promised Rolo I'd tell him Luca about- stopped himself mid-sentence. Promise you'd tell him what? Spit it out, bub. We're thick as thieves now. There's a juicy secret you've got to tell me. Okay. You can come to the treehouse and I'll tell you both what happened. Heck yeah! I love how Beck runs off. Like Beck knows where the friggin' treehouse is. Beck skulking by the gate. Are you telling me there's nothing mysterious or creepy about this place? It's mostly boring and empty. I refuse to believe that. Big spiked gate, looming mansion, rich reclusive owners. It smells, it even it smells shady. Iron bars and shook the gate. Mark my words, you decadent nightmare house. You will reveal your secrets to me. It really will. What did you do? First of all, I told you so. Second, hide. A 
That's Eris Valentine. Who's that she's talking to? Shh. I expect you to return that suit in working order. Of course. As long as everything proceeds as planned, there's nothing to worry about. The only thing I'm worried about is what's rightfully mine. If that means making some unsavory alliances, so be it. I couldn't agree more. There comes a time to suspend hostilities. I'll deal with our common threat. Now this is what I'm talking Dex's about. voice was an excited whisper. Proper shady stuff. Someone in that someone in that suit someone in a suit like that tried to grab me yesterday. Seriously? Shh. You do understand when this inevitably fails, I will deny everything. I wouldn't expect any less of you. You just worry about your part in this and let me handle the rest. I can't wait to see the look on that Rube Kerr's face. Yes, the truth will come to light. I'm still surprised you're so comfortable with the potential collateral damage. If there's one thing I've learned is that change is painful. Wow, I was expecting shady, but that's just flat out supervillain talk. If you don't mind me asking, why? Why are you doing the all this? mysterious figure retracted their mask. Hair pushing out from all corners. Who's it gonna be? Family. A chill ran down Lucas' spine. Uh, that's my grand. His vision blurred. Vex stifled a sharp wince, and Luca looked down to see himself wrenching her hand. An answer I can certainly respect. Grand tussled her hair back under the face mask. Just remember, keep everything nice and normal until the festival. I don't need a lesson in rousing suspicion. Grand gave Eris a curt nod and disappeared into the night. Hmm. Grand did talk chapter about unsavory five. alliances. Alright. On to chapter five. I'm enjoying this way too much. What big ears you have. What big ears you have, Mr. Wolf. Lucas sat shivering in the bushes, staring at his feet. After checking to make sure the coast was clear, Beck gave him a gentle tug on his sweater. What's wrong? You look like you've seen a ghost. Why are you so scared of the old lady in the hazmat suit? That was my gran. That was your gran? Yeah. Okay, uh, well, I'm sure this is a perfectly reasonable explanation for all of this. Let's just get to the treehouse and figure things out there. Lead the way. Okay, we have to meet up with Rollo at the treehouse. We've got a whole host of these now, but I'm liking how this is playing and how this is unfolding. This is quite interesting. For the last time, there's nothing to worry about. Of course, we're not worried. The clipboard finished writing with a scratchy flourish and looked up. Just dotting our I's and crossing our T's. Well, maybe try minding your P's and Q's. Mr. Nuncreed, arms crossed over his paunch, gave an exhausted sigh. If there's anything you need knowing, you'll know it. Absolutely. If you'll just sign here, acknowledging everything is accurate, we'll be all over your hair in a flash. Oh, for the love of... He snatched the pad and scribbled his name so hard, the pen nearly snapped. There. And would you like my eternal soul as well? The clipboards looked at each other for a moment, almost pondering the possibility. Then broke into laughter as they walked away. Ah, uh, hi, Mr. Nuncreed. Luca, let me give you some advice. The next time someone you don't know asks to hear your thoughts, Give him a good hard bop right in the kisser. 
Oh, Gran tells me just to keep away from the clipboards. That's good, that's good. Your Gran is a smart lady, Luca. Speaking of which, you better run along home now. Too dark out to be wandering on your own. Yeah, not gonna do that, Mr. Nuncreed, who I know is a terrible human being. I mean, okay, he's not a terrible human being, because he's not a human being. Another day, another dollar. See you tomorrow, Z. Have you noticed how all the perennial harvest folks order the same drink? Decaf cappuccino with extra foam. Why? I don't know. It's just thought it was a little odd. Pretty weird for sure. Well, the customer's always right. See you early, bright and early tomorrow. <sighs> I can't wait. They all ordered the same drink. What does that mean? We know all these people are just terrible. William Kerr and Gus Valentine proudly surveyed the half-covered festival banner. It's all coming together quite nicely. Couldn't have done it without the you. The mayor gave a half-hearted shrug. Oh, I'm not so sure about that. Nonsense. That reminds me, I wasn't able to thank your sister for her contributions. Yeah, she has been indisposed of late. She doesn't much like me, does she? Oh, uh, no, it's not that at all. She's just been busy. Of course. Regardless, it would be forever grateful if you could pass my thanks on to her. The History Museum adds a real air of importance to the whole affair. And we could, couldn't could very well celebrate the story of Beacon Pines without including the Valentines. My father was a great man. You're darn tootin' he was. Kerr locked his arm on Gus's shoulder. But I mean the entire Valentine family, present company included. Can I ask you something, Mr. Kerr? Call me William. Ask away. William, why are you doing all this? Gosh, I've never felt one needed to com needed a compelling reason to throw a party. No, just the festival. All of this. There's got to be a hundred down on their luck towns out there. Why is perennial harvest so invested in helping Beacon Pines? You know what I love most about the agricultural business? Seeds. Seeds? Yep, little bundles of potential. With a glimmer in his eye, Kerr gestured grandly toward the horizon. You treat a seed right, nurture it, feed it, and it can grow into something truly special. You see potential here? Undoubtedly. The seed of greatness is already under our feet. All it needs is a little nudge. And the right leadership, of course. Oh. Good night, Mr. Mayor Valentine. Oh, this is nice. Yeah, the treehouse is just a little further on from here. So, what's your buddy Rolo like? Rolo, he's... Rolo. Not particularly helpful. Sorry, I've just never thought about it. Lots of energy. He's funny, even when he's not trying to be. Things have been tough for his family since the fowl harvest. It's about damn time you tell me what this fowl harvest thingy is. It's uh, kind of a long story. Hit me with the highlights. Okay. There used to be a fertilizer company here called Valentine's. They were kind of a big deal. Ooh, big deal fertilizer. It was a big deal to us. Their stuff really worked. Farmers loved it. So Valentine grew and grew. Beacon Pines pretty much grew around it. Most everyone in town either worked for Sharper Valentine or used his fertilizer. Things were good. I'm sensing a big butt. Around six years ago, Sharper Valentine suddenly died and something changed. Changed how? Could have been a bad batch. Maybe it was in the water or air or soil. Nobody knows, but all the crops died and everyone blamed the Valentines. The fowl harvest. Yeah. Valentine's fertilizer went out of business. Half the town lost their jobs. Sheesh. The next year the crops came back, but something was different. You plant a crop, you do everything right, and it's sort of crapshoot what happens. And no one knows why? Nope. I take it Rolo's farm got the short end of the stick. Yup, for some reason their farm was hit harder than others. That sucks. Things have gotten better since perennial harvest came to town. The Beacon Pines Reborn Initiative? Yep, first thing they did was give the town a deep scrub. They even put us put us up in hotels one town over for a week while they decontaminated the groundwater. Hmm, we better get going. 
put us up in a hotel so they could decontaminate doesn't sound like that's what they were doing. It's about time. I was about to give up and go home. Who's the new kid? Name's Beck. You must be Rolo. I see my reputation precedes me. Welcome to Mission Rolo Control. Rolo waggled his head with pride. You'll find we spare no expense in construction. I've seen worse looking piles of junk. Thanks. Hey, Luca, you know the security concerns we talked about? Yeah. While I was waiting, I made some improvements. Let me lock this baby down for a little test infiltration. Can't be too safe these days. He goes all out, doesn't he? Always. Alright, I gotta assume I gotta find something to throw at this dang thing. There we go. There! <laughs> There's little puzzles built in, I like it. Oh, come on. There we go. And down comes the ladder. <laughs> Where do you guys get all this junk in the first place? There's a guy in town named Jeff who trades us junk for snacks. Junk food for junk. Nice. So, pretty sweet security, right? It was imaginative, I'll give you that. Luca, are we sure we can trust this new recruit? I'll vouch for her. Thanks, I guess? Hey Luca, you promised to fill me in about the Valentine Warehouse. Luca um... Sucked in a long breath. So like I said, there was someone there. What were they doing? I don't know, but the place was lit up and active. Maybe they were squatters? I don't think so, it seemed more organized. When the man pulled me in, I saw some sort of equipment running. A man pulled you in? Yeah, but I got away. You keep saying it was a man. They were wearing a mask, right? Yeah. Then it could have been a woman. How did you get away? I grabbed a rock or something and broke their mask. They let go and I ran. Dang. That's intense. No wonder you freaked out when you saw your grandma. Yeah, that's the other part. On our way here, Beck and I saw Eris Valentine meeting with Gran, wearing the same sort of hazmat suit. A low whistle. And they weren't there for idle chit chat. It was a proper clandestine meetup. So let me get this straight. There's an operation in full swing at the Valentine Warehouse. You're almost abducted by a strange man or woman in a protective suit. And then you saw your grand in the same suit talking to Eris Valentine? Pretty much. I'm beginning to think this town is kind of awesome. Luca shot back a look. No offense. And so we can logically conclude aliens or alien zombies have infiltrated the town. And their leader is your grand, and she tried to murder you. First of all, and for the last time, there are no aliens. Second, it couldn't have been my grand at the warehouse. I broke that person's mask to get away. The mask grand was wearing wasn't damaged. But she's definitely hiding something. Maybe. Your grand is weird, but she might be the most boring person in the universe. All she does is sit around all day making jam. What could she possibly have to hide? I don't know, we haven't talked much since she moved in. Moved in? Your grand isn't from here? No, she came a few months back to take care of me after after his mom went missing. Did you know your grand before? Not really, no. It's been years since I've seen her. Luca, don't take this the wrong way, but are we sure your grand is on the up and up? Luca gazed out the window. I'm just saying. It sounds like strange stuff has been happening since she showed up. We could say the same thing about your family. But you're right. 
Luca, your gran is hiding something. And Pa always says, folks only bury stuff worth digging up. We need to investigate your house. If Gran really is hiding something, don't you think I would have noticed by now? It's kind of the whole point of hiding something. And I guess you're right. Gran's been leaving the house for hours at time this week. I'll call you two tomorrow when the coast is clear. And we can start going get to the bottom of this. I'm always game for a good snoop. You can count me in. Okay. Chapter 6. And now we're on to Chapter 6. Secret Lair. Secret Lair. Summer forged ahead, but the nights only seemed to grow colder. Luca walked home slowly under the pale starlight, cautious to avoid any more surprises lurking in the shadows. Reaching home, he slipped quietly into bed, half dreading what they might discover the next day. What time is it? We got changed right away. We're learning. Uh, all right, let's go downstairs. Eventually, we got to go into our parents' room, right? Is that where we're going to snoop? I feel like that's where we're going to snoop. Or the closet. Rolo, what on earth is that? Hmm? That ridiculous thing on your head. Oh, this? It helps me think. You're going to need a lot more to give those. Joke all you want. We'll see who's laughing when I crack this case wide open. The coast is clear? Yep, whenever she's been up this week, it's been keeping her busy most of the day. Very well. The game is afoot. Luca and Beck rolled their eyes as Rolo strutted across the room. If I were a grand, where would I hide my deepest, darkest secrets? Perhaps where you might least expect it. Rolo flung open the cabinet with confidence. I love how the story says with confidence. That's amazing. He coughed as a veil of dust hit his face. I think it's safe to assume anything that's dusty isn't what we're looking for. Or maybe that's what she wants you to think. Then again, any good detectives know not to trust their first hunch. First hunches are for suckers. <laughs> oh, man. Eureka! She's lit a fire in order to burn the evidence. She keeps that fire going every day, Rolo. Drat. It may already be too late. Just think of the mounds of documents lost to ash. Okay. I'm going to stop you right there. Can we just think for a moment? Luca, is there anywhere your grand doesn't want you to go? Yeah. The upstairs closet. So maybe it stands to reason that we should check there first. No dice. It's locked. Well, well, well. Look who stands to reason now. And I have no idea where the key is. If it really is important, then she probably keeps it with her. Anywhere else? She has her berry bushes. Who has ever thought, I'm going to take this important thing and huck it in a bush? True. Anything else? Maybe something out of the ordinary? Well, she's always worried I'll break her fancy dishware in the kitchen. But it doesn't matter anyways, I can't reach the a latch. Of realization crept onto Luca's face. All three kids snapped to glance at each other, then sprinted in turn toward the kitchen. All right, Rolo. This is your time to shine. Ah, yes. You've called upon my expert detective skills. And now I shall proceed with... Finish, Luca scrambled up Rolo's back. <laughs> we use Rolo as a step stool. Hey, this isn't my idea of detective work. Every squad needs a good lockpick. And every good lockpick needs a sturdy head to sit on. This is beneath my standing. Stop complaining and hold still. Got it. The three crowded around the hutch to peer in. With the glass doors opened, a perfect porcelain display gleamed in front of them. Their eyes searched for anything amiss. But the only distinct feature was its impeccability. <laughs> its impeccability. Well, that was an anticlimactic. Yeah, I don't... I don't really know what we were expecting. Like, uh, oh, hey! 
Let me just yank on this random teacup and on one of the teacups. It's slanted forward with a hollow click. <laughs> the entire hutch began to rustle and slide under its own power. Seems like your gran has been doing us some remodeling. Dude, only two types of people have secret lairs. Evil masterminds and superheroes. So which one do you think she is? We're about to find out. Okay, so more of an unhinged conspiracist vibe. Oh, wow. Yeah, this cannot be good. We need to look around before jumping to conclusions. Luca jostled each cabinet drawer in turn. Only one was unlocked. He fingered through the filing cabinet, pausing at a bulging folder labeled Walter. For a long moment, he just stared at it. What do you got there? It's... My dad. Looks like some of his old medical files. Your dad was a doctor? Luca nodded and caressed the label with his thumb. Well, are you going to read it? I... Here, let me help. Hello swiped the folder from the drawer and began leafing through the pages. He whistled to himself, barely looking at the text. How about you actually read some of it? One sec. Dense documents such as this are a lot like a cheeseburger. It's best to skip straight to the middle. And it's where all the meaty bits live. Wow, I had no idea we were in the presence of a preeminent scholar in dense documents and cheeseburgers. By all means, proceed. He stopped at a page and mimed holding up a monocle. <laughs> mimed holding up a monocle. Ah, here we are. Follow-up examination of Terence Wilby. Patient shows further signs of paleness and malaise. Body temperature continues to drop. He now describes soreness of muscles and joints. This is similar to the symptoms exhibited by Mrs. Wilby just a few days past. Still waiting on lab results from Joseph. Looked up with heightened surprise. See, creepy. Yeah, it's kind of disturbing. Who's Joseph? That's Mr. Nuncreed's name. Wait. Bolo's finger traced across the page. There's more scribble than the margins. Could it be contagious? Mr. Wilby claims the tap water at his home has been contaminated. Perhaps environmental. Lab results only raise more questions. It's like he came back to this report later and made those notes. So it might be related to something else. Bolo scanned through several more pages. Here, the writing looks shaky. I just couldn't help her. This disease, or whatever it is, progresses so fast. And with his wife passing, Terence's condition follows close behind. Exasperated by the loss. Enough is enough. I need to take matters into my own Luca, hands. Staring blankly at the cabinet this whole time, spoke softly. What does it say next? Mola rustled the folder, trying to loose more pages. That's where it ends. What? There has to be more. Luca frantically shoved the remaining cabinet folders, trying to find another labeled Walter. Luca, I think that's the only one. It's alphabetical, see? What did he mean, enough is enough? How did he take matters into his own hands? This is BS! Luca slammed the door shut. A spider web of string connected photos of people from the town, interspersed with hastily scrawled notes. Well, she sure has kept herself busy. Uh, is your gran a serial killer? Because I'm starting to get a vibe. Don't be ridiculous. Sure, she's just tracking the movements of everyone in town, out of the kindness of her heart. She puts little symbols by some of them. Yeah, Mr. Nuncreed has a check mark. The clipper, clipboards are all inside a big circle. My moms are both on here. Both with question marks. 
Gus Valentine has a question mark. Eris has a question mark that's been crossed out. Uh, Mr. Kerr has a bullseye. The killer has chosen her next victim. We don't know any what any of this means. Whatever it means, it's probably not good. have here barrels marked caution explosive and jam jars it's enough jam to feed the whole town what kind of incendiary jam is your grand making incinerary hey that's like the first one that doesn't have a person on it she wouldn't have had me walking around town delivering bombs right only one way to find Rolo out casually spun open a lid and dipped his finger in the jam oh Rolo Huckleberries. He smacked his lips. A hint of brown sugar? And... Ink? What? Rolo plunged his hand in the jar, fishing out a soggy slip of paper. Aha! Rolo offered the slimy note to Luca and licked his fingers clean. It's addressed to Mrs. Fratelli. A grand jam, Graham? It says last night I used the disguise Eris provided to scout the location. The timing window should be possible. Operation Spark Plug is a go. Oh man, are they doing a heist? Whatever it is, it can't be good. So, more a bombshell than a bomb, am I right? You're new here, so I'll let it slide. But I'm the bad joke guy around here. around a worn-down old map of Beacon Pines. Cool, this looks like a treasure map. Not every old map is a treasure map, Rolo. Yeah, but every treasure map is an old map. Can't fault that logic. Look, there's even a pathway drawn on it. It starts at the entrance to town. And if we follow Rolo carefully it... carefully trace the path with his finger. It leads right to... He jabbed down at the end point. Town Square? That's the fountain in the middle of town. What a weird place to hide a treasure. Um, Rolo, that doesn't look like treasure to me. The end of the path is on the map has the same symbols as those, ex those explosives over there. So, it's not hiding treasure? A real bummer. Rolo, what's the thing you've been excited about for the past month? The festival! Oh, did you say, huh? This, seems, this feels like a gulp kind of situation. Everyone will be gathered near the center of town. She's going to blow up the festival. Not if we stop her. Uh, what was that? Luca looked up from the map. What was that? What was what? No, I heard it too. That was the front door. Which means someone just shut the door. Which means someone's upstairs. Shh, quiet. Hit the lights. Beck flicked off the light, and they became statues in the dark. Overhead, creaking floorboards bent under slow, deliberate steps. The kids looked up, the tilt of their necks following each football. Then suddenly, it stopped. Without realizing, they'd been holding their breath. All three exhaled shakily and glanced at each other. How can they glance at each other in the pitch black? A muffled male voice broke the silence. Male voice? Oh. Hello? A final few footsteps reached the entrance above them, and the voice now echoed down the stairs. Oh, oh, oh. Anyone down there? The three kids shuffled to the corners without a peep. He began to descend the stairs. The man's voice punctuated every new step. Thump. Oh. Yoo -hoo. Thump. Oh, 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 oh. I'm not here to hurt anyone. Thump. Oh, 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 oh. I'm just here to help. Thump. Oh. Just Thump. at the bottom step, the man paused. Squinting to search the room for signs of life. 
Huh? Guess it's nothing. Lulu shifted suddenly. Luca gave him an intense, chastising look and whispered through clenched teeth. Rolo, don't! It was too late. Rolo was already inching toward the stairway. He screeched as he charged toward the shadowy figure. Flaming chicken coop! With all his weight, Rolo tackled the man to the ground. Rolo. Mysterious creepy man? Anyone there? From the dark corner, they saw something move. Well, I didn't know if I had it in me. But there's only one way to find out. Holy crap, Rolo, that was awesome! Wait, did you just kill that person? Lucas scrambled to the hunched figure on the ground. Pressing his fingers to the man's neck, he sighed with relief. You sure clobbered him good, Rolo. You knocked him out cold. As Beck flicked back on the light, Luca and Rolo both gasped in stereo. Mr. Tolliver? Chapter 7 Alright, another chapter. Let's keep going. The Interrogation of Hiram Tolliver Still unconscious, Mr. Tolliver slumped heavily in a shoddy old chair. His hands were bound with rope, his feet tied with some loose string. The kids huddled in a circle, discussing their plan. One thing was certain, they couldn't just let Mr. Tolliver go. They needed to know what he was doing in Luca's house. After some deliberation, it was decided. They'd run the classic good cop, chill cop interrogation. They'd run the classic good cop, I mean, chill's chill the only option. cop interrogation. I'll handle this. Just gotta play it cool. Luca walked calmly to the light switch, flicking it off and on a few times. Mr. Tolliver shook his head, gathering his wits. Golly, I sure got my bell he rung. He over to find Luca, who returned a calming grin. Sorry, Mr. Tolliver. This was all a big mistake. Luca, what's going on here? Why do you have me strapped down? No one's fault, really. Rolo just got a little startled. Rolo's here? Rolo and Beck emerged from hiding to give a timid wave. Well, all right. Mistakes happen. You kids gave old Hiram a good scare. Let's, let's, let's just get me out of these ropes and call it Luca even. glanced over to Rolo and Beck, who replied with skeptical looks. Mr. Tolliver, why are you in my grand's basement? I'm here to help, of course. Help with what? What's my grand up to? If you cut me loose, I can show you. How do I know we can trust you? Mr. Tolliver exhaled with disappointment. Luca, have I ever done any wrong by you? No. And since your grand moved to town, have I, haven't I been nothing but welcoming? Yeah. So why would I turn my back on your family now? It's just... All this stuff seems pretty weird. A board with names of people from town, an archive of my dad's old disturbing patient notes... Luca gestured to the corner. Barrels of explosives... I can explain everything. You just need to untie me. You kids deserve an explanation. Luca looked again to Rolo and Beck. This time they shrugged. Luca began to slowly loosen the bindings. Mr. Tolliver gently rubbed his wrists. We must have tied those ropes pretty tight. That's a good lie. This all makes sense in he time. He imperceptibly toward the stairs as he spoke. You see, this town has secrets, Luca. A very dark past indeed. Before the kids had even noticed his movement, Mr. Tolliver was at the light switch. A past that must be brought to... He punctuated to... his final words by flicking the switch and rushing up the stairs. Oh. 
Light. Son of a... Beck darted to the wall and turned back on the lights. It was too late. Rolo confirmed what they all heard. He just locked us down Mr. here. Mr. Tolliver's muffled voice came from behind the door. I wasn't lying, you know. This is for your own good. You kids just keep tight down there and let the adults handle this. They looked bewildered at each other. See, I don't think he's actually a bad guy. Play it cool, huh? Not now, Beck. They heard the staccato thump of quick steps exiting the house. The kids looked down in resignation. This isn't how it goes in Hank Atomic. For some reason, they'd always assumed it was up to them to save their town. Luca opened his mouth, hoping to conjure some magical words to make this right. Only a hollow croak escaped. The end. <laughs> the end. Well, we certainly aren't going to find a grand resolution to our tale locked in a basement. Back to the drawing board. Okay, let's see what we can do here. Yeah, I think that's my option. We go back to weather, weather, and see about uh, having it rain instead of seeing Grant, right? Then we don't investigate. That's what I'm guessing. That's what I'm guessing. We're going to go with Rumble. Luca began to respond, but the sky answered for him as the clouds above began to rumble with ominous thunder. You sure you can make it home before the storm kicks off? Luca surveyed the roiling clouds. I'd say the odds are good. Maybe you should stay here and I'll just make a break for it. At that moment, the heavens opened up, unleashing torrential rain. Care to relocate, re recalculate those odds? Hurry inside, you two, before you catch cold. Luca, Nelly will keep trying to reach your grand on the phone. In the meantime, you two hold tight. Sorry, not much to do up here. Most of my stuff is still in boxes. Mind if I poke around? Be my guest. Luca squinted into the eye hole of the microscope. This looks wild. What is it? Gum. Gum? Luca adjusted the slide with his fingers to get a better look. I'm tracking the structural integrity of gum with increased amounts of chewing. I chewed that one for 47 days. Luca wiped his hand off on his sweater and gave a nervous laugh. It's weird, I know. Beck looked down, timidly tapping the ladder with her feet. You think it's weird, don't you? A little. But weird can be cool. Oh, wow. Rollo and I have a radio just like this at the treehouse. Probably not exactly like this one. My mom and I tore the whole thing down to bolts, fitted it with some state-of-the-art vacuum tubes. She seems pretty awesome. She gets carried away sometimes. I think she feels guilty for working too much. So when she does have time for me, she showers me with high-tech overcompensation. Like at one of the toggles. I bet you can get all sorts of stations on this. 
Not out here in the boonies. You wouldn't believe the stuff I could pick up back in the city. But around here, it's all farm reports and static. Ah, shucks. Luca bent down to examine the bouquet of wilting flowers. Judging by the odor, they were well past their prime. Pungent. Okay. He flipped over could be the attached card. Happy trails from Coach Walker and all the Fairview Condors. Boy, you weren't kidding about poking around, huh? Oh, sorry, was this from your old school? The most recent one, yeah. Some schools gave me going away cards, some did flowers. When they really trying to feel good about themselves, they do both. So you moved a lot? Yeah, that's the thing with having brilliant parents. There's always a better job somewhere else. These flowers would last longer if you put them in some water. That's the sort of thing I would do if I cared. Well, you cared enough to keep them, is all. Luca, can I ask you something? Of course. Dang it, didn't that hurt? I'll be honest, that hurt more than I expected. Well, at least you look cool doing it. Beck took a moment to watch the rivulets of water running down the window. Do you ever feel alone? Like, even when people are around? Well, Rolo can be pretty absent-minded sometimes. I'm serious. Does it ever feel like your family doesn't care what you want? Uh, I didn't used to feel that way. I know Gran loves me, but sometimes when she looks at me, it's like she's looking at a problem. Luca took a deep breath, exhaling slowly. I know the feeling. How do you deal with that? I guess I haven't yet, but one thing my dad told me when I was little, don't hold a grudge, especially against yourself. If you try to hold it all in, you're gonna pop. So then, what do you do when you don't know what to do? Dad never got to that part. Sometimes, something I figured out on my own though, you gotta do something, anything. Here. What are you doing? I don't know, something. We're going to register a complaint with the storm. Listen here, you miserable universe. Stop jerking me around. Just to, I just want to... I just want things to go back to the way they were. Everyone tells me it's going to be all right. Things are going to change. Out a feral scream that echoed into the I night. won't scream into the mic. Every time something changes, everything gets worse. Screw this town. Whoa. Let me try. Moving sucks. I hate it. I hate that, I hate it. Why can't I just deal with it and be happy for my mom? Why can't we just stay somewhere? Ah! I just want to be a normal kid. There. Wow, I actually feel a little better. As abruptly as it began. Oh, I don't have to read that again. Thanks, I needed that. Me too. I should head out before the st rain starts up again. Sure, I'll walk you out. See you and Rolo at the festival? Sounds good. Luca, don't let the universe jerk you around. Beth gave Luca a light thump on the arm before heading in. Chapter 5. And now we're all the way back at Chapter 5. Oh, man. I can't believe we all come all the way back here, but such is life. All right, let's continue. Friendly feud. The air was heavy with a hard rain's residue. The smell of wet things. Despite his dreary surroundings, Luca felt at peace. He'd never shared those details about his dad with anyone. Not even Rollo. But it's not like this changed anything. Rolo was still his best friend. Adding Beck to the group would help balance things out. Everything's better in threes. This is what Luca told himself as he headed to the treehouse. Okay. So now we're catching up with Rolo at the treehouse. It's, it's fun and weird all at the same time how these things... 
how these things work. Hey Don, tracking down a lead? Yeah, you bet. I heard a juicy new rumor. Turns out when Sharper Valentine died, he left behind a particular last will and testament. Peculiar, peculiar how? It didn't just give his kids an inheritance, there were conditions. Like what? The document stipulated that the heiress had to take on a child as her ward. A kid our age who just showed up to town one night with a lawyer. Solomon? Bingo! So heiress was forced to take care of him. Yep, or she would have lost everything. Why would Sharper, Sharper care so much about some random kid? Rumor has it old Sharper sowed some wild oats. That explains the way Eris treats him. Poor Solomon. How did you find all this out? A good reporter never reveals her source, Luca. I mean, that's some juicy details, though. Someone's uh, doing a little something on the side. Sharper Valentine was having a little, having a little fun on the side. If you catch my drift, a little fun on the side. I do feel at times like this that we move a little bit slower than I would like. Like, let me just get through here, yo! Excuse me, what are you doing? Just locking up for the night, sir. Oh, wonderful. I can only assume this means all festival preparations have been completed ahead of schedule. Uh, not exactly, sir. The storm set us back a bit and it's getting late, so we all decided to... You all decided? Yes, sir. I was unaware that your job involved deciding things. We are all here at we here we are all here at Perennial Harvest because we believe in creating a better future. Yes, yes, sir. Very much, sir. Do you want to be the one to tell this town we failed them? N no. Then we get that we gave up because there was a little rainstorm and we all got sleepy. Of course not, sir. Good. Then it's decided. Yes, sir. We'll work till the task is done. See that you do. Our harvest awaits. Man, we're getting all these little tidbits on the way over to the treehouse. I love it. We want here. There's a light on upstairs. Okay. Um. Let's head this way and head to the treehouse. Rolo, are you still up there? I'm sorry. Rolo isn't accepting visitors at the moment. Come back never. Luca had only ever heard him speak in this stiff yet gentle tone a few times. And it always meant one thing. You're upset. Oh, what makes you say that? Maybe because my best friend abandoned me for no reason? I didn't abandon you. I just, I'm just a little late. Rolo scoffed. The rain held me up. Liar. You weren't even home. What? The storm got bad and I got worried. So I went looking for you. Imagine my surprise when I made it to your house, and you weren't there. I hadn't, hadn't made it back yet. I'm not a fool, Luca. It doesn't take all day to deliver some jam. No, I... That storm rolled in out of nowhere, and I got stuck after dinner at Beck's. Lucas ha. stumbled on his words, knowing he'd said too much. Beck? Dinner? What the heck is a Beck? She's a new kid in town. She's actually kind of cool. You'd like her. She needed help convincing her parents that she made a new friend. New friends? I spent all day waiting for you, and you were off making new friends? It's not like that, Rolo. You know, when I was waiting, I made some upgrades to mission control. It was going to be a surprise, but you took so long, the storm knocked it all down. Just like you knocked down our friendship. What does that even mean? Luca became instinctively angry in response. Both boys were now shouting across the distance. It means you're a bad friend. You don't care about me. Of course I care, you ass. I knew I'd get in trouble waiting so late for you, but I kept my word, cause that's what friends do. Oh wow, what a noble sacrifice you made. Easy for you to say. Your grand doesn't even care. You can't stay. You can stay out as long as you want, and you wouldn't even get in trouble. Seriously? You're acting like I choose this? Is that what you think? Then maybe you're the bad Rolo's friend. Tone changed to a calm yet more intense anger. Maybe pause right. Storms bring more than water. This one brought out the real Luca. Stop quoting your pause nonsense like it means anything. 
old. Yeah, well, at least my paw is still the around. Words hung in the cold night air. That's that's cold right there. Willow's stomach dropped, knowing he'd crossed a line. But it was too late. That's cold, Rollo. Luca, I. Good night, Rollo. Dang it. Okay, well, um. It's not how we expected things to go. Luca dug through his old stuff, not even sure what he was looking for. Rolo. What a jerk. Call me a bad friend. Oh, I'm Rolo. Look at me and my amazing family. I guess I'm ne just never supposed to make new friends. Luca? Gran cooed gently from the hallway. You slept straight through breakfast. Luca, are you alright? I'm fine. Just don't feel like getting up yet. Okay, I'll leave this oatmeal by the door. I gotta run out and take care of some things. Okay. I'll be back later to check in. Sure. Luca just wanted to be alone. He waited to hear the sound of the front door closing. I bet Rolo's still going to go to the festival. He's going to be miserable. If Rolo thinks I'm still going to go to the festival with him, he can shove it. Oh, we're just going to hop back in bed again. Luca, I see you didn't eat your oatmeal. Wasn't hungry. Well, just in case you get hungry, I'll leave a sandwich here too. Thanks. Rolo came by. What did he say? He wanted to talk to you. What did you say? I told him you weren't feeling well. Good. So your plan is to just sit in your room all day? Pretty much. Well, I need to pop away again for a minute. If you decide to end your party, pity party and go outside, I think it'd be good. Do you some good. Noted. Lucas still couldn't bring himself to go out. Pity party. Besides, if he ran into Rolo, he'd have to actually confront the situation. There's never anything interesting in the festival anyway. The Adventures of Hank Atomic. The complete first volume. Luca carefully opened the cover and began to read. Rollo had received it for his birthday. A special hardcover edition with behind the scenes commentary and bonus art. Rollo cherished it, but asked that Luca keep it at his house. Luca wasn't sure if it was because Rollo didn't trust himself with it, didn't trust his sister around it, or just wanted an excuse to come hang out at Luca's more often. Whatever the reason, Luca didn't mind. But it had stayed right there where Rollo had stashed it ever since. Now, at the foot of his bed, Luca lost himself in the pages. He'd read it all before, but at this moment, it somehow felt sentimental. He was well into issue number five when he heard soft footsteps from the hallway. Luca! 
Another little friend came to see you. A girl named Beck Modwell. She said you met yesterday? What did she say? Is she here? She was just dropping by. I told her you weren't taking visitors today. Oh. She seems nice. Yeah. You had a fight with Rolo, didn't you? Can I come in? Maybe later. Alright then. I'll leave dinner on the kitchen table. In case you want a bite, bite before bedtime. Without realizing it, Luca had pouted away the entire afternoon. He once again felt the weight of it all and allowed his weary eyes to close. Luca stood in a vast black expanse. He looked up at his father standing beside him. Walt was working a straw at the bottom of a fountain glass, trying to collect the last bits of milkshake. Dad, where are we? Taking a final loud gurgling sip, his father peered up from the glass. He jangled the straw playfully with a warm smile, then lifted the empty glass as if to point into the darkness. The source. Luca's eyes followed his father's gesture. In an instant, he was sitting in front of a blazing campfire. Across from him sat a large figure in a yellow hazmat suit. The figure's voice was a scratchy echo. Well, if it isn't the man of the hour, make yourself comfortable. Luca held his shivering hands over the flame to warm himself. It doesn't work that way here. Their yellow-gloved hand pointed to the base of the flame. It's a cold flame, see? Luke appeared at the base of the fire. It wasn't wood that was burning. It was Beacon Pines itself, tiny buildings, freezing and crumbling as they were consumed by flame. Luca could see small shadows moving in the burning city. People. Luca leapt to his feet. We've got to help them! The figure gave a dismissive wave of their hand. Why waste energy helping people who can't even help themselves? The figure bent down to examine the panicked crowd as they desperately tried to stop the flames. They only care about what's right in front of them. Not like us. Luca's voice was a trembling whisper. Us? The figure slowly stood up, grabbing its helmet with both hands. With a jolt and a twist, the suit emitted a gasp. A cloud of torpid mist escaped, slowly revealing the face within. Luca's own face looked back at him. Older, worn, distant. The sensation was oddly familiar, as if he'd caught his own reflection by surprise in the mirror. The doppelganger smiled. I tried to help once. He gestured towards his face. And all it got me was this. Lucas staggered back. You aren't me. Luca felt a hand catch his shoulder. His father was there again, beside him. Every choice sets us on a path. This is the end of one of your paths, son. Luca watched his older self shake its head ruefully, its face twisting into a cruel grin. Well, Dad, if you wanted him to see this, far be it from me to disappoint. Luca watched in shock as the figure took a confident step forward and plunged into the flames. In a flash of cold light, he was gone. What does all of this mean? Luca felt a reassuring squeeze on his shoulder. Just remember why we choose matters just as much as what we choose. Luca woke up to see a hazy figure at the foot of his bed, silhouetted in the morning sun. 
Okay, uh, so we just had a mic change. <laughs> if you were with me for my birthday streams, you know why. If you weren't, well, it's a brand new mic. So this might sound just a tad different than it did before, but let's keep going. Mom? No, dear. It's only Gran. Lupo rubbed his eyes. The kind, concerned face of his Gran came into focus. How are you feeling? Fine. Anything you want to talk about? I don't feel like talking. That's just as well. How about you sit there and listen a bit? Whenever, Whatever you and Rolo thought about doesn't matter. But he... Grand silenced Luca with a gentle pat on the leg. Fights between friends happen. What was said doesn't matter. The important thing is that it's not the last thing you ever say to each other. But he said stuff about dad. Well, do you think he meant it? No. He was just mad. Hmm. And did you mean any of the things you said to him? No. Good. One must appreciate friends in their best moments and accept them in their worst. Okay, we got accept. Um, we got another one too. Now, you get your little butt out of bed. The festival's today. You don't want to miss that, do you? I guess not. Seems like a good opportunity to make amends with Rolo, doesn't it? A reluctant nod. So buy him a corn dog and apologize. But he's the one that... What did I just say? Buy him a corn dog. That's a good boy. Everything's better with corn dogs. I need to get going now. Gets go got some last minute festival business to take care of. I'll come find you at the fountain a little after lunch. All right. I love you, Luca. Love you too. All right. Luca took a deep breath. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we're off. Chapter six. Chapter six. Here we go. Through thick and thin. Despite Luca's bitterness, Gran was right. He needed to hash things out with Rolo. A big fight changes the nature of a friendship. Whether, in the end, it is for the better or for the worse, all comes down to understanding. If one is not careful, the same familiarity that builds the strongest of bonds can become the wrecking ball that shatters them. Luca emerged from seclusion, taking in the crisp festival air. But the events of the day weren't on his mind. He had to find Rolo. Okay, so it looks like we're off to find Rolo. Where could Rolo be? I'm going to guess he's actually at the treehouse. There's Roxy. There you are. Luca. <laughs> Rolo wanted me to tell you something. What is Roxy it? Roxy rolled her eyes, shaking her head. <laughs> <sighs> a space adventure, though you needn't buy it. If you'd be brave, go somewhere quiet. Uh, Roxy, I don't. It's a riddle, Luca. My goofy little brother wants you to find Luca him. Luca looked down and kicked at the dirt. Look, I know you two had a fight. The only thing more annoying than my little brother is my little brother without his best friend. So I'm doing him this one favor. Now, I need one favor from you. Whatever it is that went down between you two, squash it. <laughs> Alright, Roxy, we will. A space adventure, though, you needn't buy it. If you go, if you be brave, go somewhere quiet. I'm going to go to the library. <clears throat> That's going to be my guess. How goes the beetle hunt? Pretty rotten. I haven't seen him as much in his exuvia. And it's not just the beetles. This morning I couldn't find any critters at all. It's like everything that buzzes or skitters just packed up and left. I'm sure they're out there somewhere. Maybe all the commotion of the festival just spooked them. Yeah, maybe that's it. Unique New York. Unique New York. Huh? Oh, don't mind me. Just warming up for my big ceremony Mr. speech. Mr. pointed to his grinning mouth. Gotta limmer up the old gab box. You nervous? Oh, heavens no. Well, break a leg. Give me the gift. Oh, I missed that. Okay, I can't talk to that person. I can talk to this person, the clipboard. Welcome to our festival. Don't forget to come back later for Mr. Kerr's speech and the Perennial Harvest Festival sign reveal. You don't want to miss it. 
I don't know who Perennial Harvest thinks they're impressing with this ridiculous festival. Totally. The town's still falling apart, the weather's still cruddy, and the season's harvest looks like it's going to be worse than last year's. You said it. No amount of corporate pandering is going to change any of that. Exactly. But... The lemonade at the drink stand over there does look pretty tasty. Fits. I'm still going to be mad at them. I'd just rather be mad while sipping some delicious lemonade is all. <laughs> this guy still snoozing? Ain't. Moving. What is he doing? <laughs> Every single time. Yep. Wait for it. Unexplained sound once again noted. <laughs> oh man, the clipboards. Like clockwork. What a bunch of drones. <laughs> Jeff was staring into the distance with a wistful look. Hey Jeff, everything all right? Uh, hey, uh, yeah, yeah, everything's fine. I mean, used to be fine. Just ain't right these days, you know? I really do, actually. Jeff turned to Luca with a furrowed brow. Then gave an understanding nod. You do, don't you? For a moment, the two now shared that same wistful gaze. Okay, well that was uh, pretty simple. But like I said, I'm going to the library. A most welcoming of welcomes. Would you like to share your thoughts? We always strive to improve. Nope. This is the first time I've seen this many smiling faces since the har fowl harvest. I had my doubts about perennial harvest, but I must admit they do put on a nice party. Piper, you're actually taking a break from studying? I wanted to see what all the festival fuss is about, but I can't help but notice you still brought your backpack full of books. Luca, backpacks can carry a lot more than just books. True, true. So what you got in there? Books. I was able to return the perennial harvest safety suit you borrowed. I don't think anyone noticed. Good. Now, will you tell me what you needed it for? It was a favor for an enemy of my enemy. This isn't going to harm Mr. Kerr, is it? All you need to know is that it's for the good of the family. Ooh. That's a bit ominous, isn't it? Okay. The library. Somewhere quiet. Yeah, it is. Hey, Luca. Kato's eyes lit with excitement. I've been expecting you. Bravo on deciphering the first riddle. Oh, come on. The first? Oh, you didn't think that was all, did you? Rolo does go all out, doesn't Kato he? Kato straightened up and cleared his throat as if preparing to sing. Ahem. <clears throat> on Planet Farpool, you may take issue. When the fifth king dies, you'll need a Kato tissue. Kato stared at Luca eagerly. Eagerly? <laughs> Get it? Want me to tell you? No, it's okay. Let me figure it out. All right, when you find it, bring it here to be verified. And if you decide you want the hint, the offer still stands. On the planet Farpool, you may take issue. When the fifth king dies, you'll need a tissue. Um... Issue. Newsstand? Is that the newsstand? Hi, Jace. Still working through the newest Hank Atomic? You know it. Some fascinating cannon towards the end. Do you know? Hank Atomic Shrink Array doesn't technically shrink stuff. It uses inverse quantum particle decay to literally grow the entire universe around an object, leaving that object unaltered. So it just looks shrunk compared to everything else? Bingo. That's wild. But Jace, no spoilers, please. Oh, right. Sorry. Okay. Um. Issue in five. I can tell you one thing. It's not out there. What you need to find is inside this library somewhere. Ugh. Luca grabbed the Adventures of Hank Atomic, issue number five, from the shelf. Once you've got the book, you can either bring it here to me or just grab a different one. Well, let's bring this one. Ah, you Kato found it! his book from the desk and replaced it with Luca's, turning on the lamp. As 
he slid the book under the purple light, two words glowed. The Adventures of Hank Atomic, Issue 5. Okay, so we found that one great. Luca clicked his tongue with recognition. Rollo's cipher pen. He used to write secret messages everywhere with that. And only I had the special flashlight needed to reveal it. But I lost it. Well, apparently he traded Jeff for this purple light bulb. Parted with his entire Halloween candy stash. Oh, Rollo. Now, let's see here. Cutter began flipping through the pages, stopping when he hit a glowing word. Get away with such a grip. He continued flipping. And only in grub cart. Reaching the end of the book, Kato looked up. Hmm. That's it. Grift in grub cart. Grift in griffin. Sorry, didn't mean to hit that button. Griffin's grub cart. He wants me to go to Griffin's snack stand. Ah, brilliant. I guess you're off then. Good luck on the rest of the scavenger hunt. Thanks, Kato. All right, go to Griffin's snack stand. I'm not even positive I know where Griffin's snack stand is. Where is Griffin's snack stand? This ain't it. Griffin's snack stand? Who's Griffin? Oh. Is this it? Griffin's snack stand. Griffin's snack stand. I'm trying to remember who Griffin is. How can I be this lost? Um... Hiya, Luca. How's Griffin doing? What? Oh, nothing. Sorry, all became flesh. Just pretending I didn't say anything. Griffin snack stand. Oh, it's down here, I think, actually. There we go. It's this dude. <laughs> I did go there before. Hey, Griffin. Did Rollo Before come? Luca could finish his sentence, Griffin handed him a corn dog. Oh, that's it? Bought and paid for. Enjoy! I thought there was supposed to be a riddle or something. Luca shrugged, taking a sizable bite out of the corn dog. Yuck! It's cold! Oh, yeah, that's been sitting here for a while. Rollo wanted me to be sure that get to give that one specifically. Well, that's Luca just. Tongued at his cheeks. Feeling something rough between his teeth. Is there a piece of paper in my corn dog? He reached into his mouth and pulled out a slip of paper. Oh, come on! He shook off the bits of corn dog to read the slip. A pickup when you need some pep. Near the fountain, up the step. Luca finished off the remainder of the corn dog. I thought it was disgusting. I just finished it? Ah, this is getting to be a whole thing. Pick up when you need some pep near the fountain up the step. Okay. Luca, did you know that Beacon's Pines is actually unincorporated? A lot of people didn't know that. Wow, yeah, I didn't know. What's that mean? It means most public works are handed in, handled internally. We do all the pipelines, the water treatment, building regulations. Hmm, that's great. Census taking. I'm backing up. That's awesome. Emergency services. <laughs> Let's get out of here. Okay, so here's the sentence. Here's the fountain. Up the step. Oh, up the step. <clears throat> there we go. <laughs> there you are, Luca. There's no way I'm actually doing this. It's way below my pay grade. Oh, come on, you big stiff. Let the kids have some fun. Fine. But Rollo owes me one. He waved his hands around sarcastically as he began. 
What takes flight but has no wings, your final task of friendship brings. See, that wasn't so hard. Oh, I feel cheapened somehow. I think it's sweet. What takes flight but has no wings, your final task of friendship brings. Good luck, Luca. What takes flight? Oh. Mission control. Oh no, there's he right there. Hey. Hey. Did you find the comic book? Yep. And you got the corn dog? Yeah. Well then, I know it doesn't make up for what I said, but here, you've earned this. Oh, sheepishly handed Luca the balloons. I don't want a bunch of balloons. Thanks. You didn't have to go to all this trouble. I'm sorry I got so mad. Dang it, you were supposed to let me apologize first. Oh, sorry. Now you've apologized twice before me. Just let me do this. Luca, I'm really sorry. With everything that happened with your mom and all, I've always wanted to be there for you. Be a good friend, you know? When you said you weren't hanging out with someone else, when you said you were hanging out with someone else, I kind of freaked out. Rolo, still my turn. I felt like if you needed someone, if you need some new friends to help you, it meant that I wasn't good enough. But that was selfish and wrong. I was wrong. I'm so sorry, Luca. Okay, apology over. You can talk Luca now. Threw himself at Rollo, hugging him as tightly as he could. Rollo, I don't deserve you. I don't deserve you either. That's why we deserve each other. So, what else do you want to do today? We could snoop around and try some more info about your mom. Snoop where? We could probably sneak into Prenley Harvest HQ while everyone's at the festival. Aren't you curious about all the stuff those clipboards write down? What if we get caught? I think I've had enough excitement for one week. Let's just make the rest of the day about us. Really? Yeah, the rest of the world can wait one more day. You know, I've been wanting to get some work done on MCDC at Mission Control. The aim is a bit unpredictable. That sounds perfect. All right, we're going to head for the treehouse. I have a feeling something nasty is about to happen because he mentioned like that one more day doesn't matter. I feel like it's going to matter. All right, we made it. Oh, I almost forgot. I ran into your grand this morning. She asked me to give you this. Rolo handed Luca an unopened letter. I'll wait for you inside if you want to read it now. A letter? Luca, some things are going to happen that might be difficult for you to understand. Oh, geez, Louise. If I am honest, I hardly understand them myself. But whatever happens, I need you to know that I love you. None of this is fair to you. You have already lost so much. We both have. I wish there was a simpler way forward. But if there is, I haven't thought of it. God knows I've tried. Everything I've done, I did for you. I hope someday you can accept that. Love, Gran. I love you too, Gran. Luca folded the paper into his pocket and had it up the ladder. Okay, what's gonna happen? What's up with the letter? Anything you want to talk about? Maybe later. Sure, whatever you want. Whenever you want, sorry. You know, you really didn't have to go to all that trouble just to apologize. I know, but we've been looking forward to the festival for weeks. After I ruined everything with my big mouth, this was the best way to make sure you still had a good time without me. Rollo. was at a loss for words. But that was fine. Words aren't always necessary. The festival seemed nice, was it nice? We can still go. Nah, this is fine. Well, there's always next year. Sadly, this was untrue. A distant rumble shook the treehouse. Huh? What was that? Oh man, we missed the fireworks. It was not fireworks. It was something the boys couldn't possibly comprehend. Something as old and cruel as time itself. A 
shockwave of cold tore through the room. A bitter, unfathomable chill. Before they could react, it encased them in ice. Two boys, reunited by friendship, only to be cruelly separated by a malevolence beyond reason. And so, our story ends on this melancholy scene. Wait, our grand did this? In a silent treehouse turned statuary. In a town brought low by its secrets, sits a pair of friends alone huh, okay. together for the rest of time. The end. <laughs> well, we gotta go back and can't change things again. Ending. It simply can't. I won't accept it, and I hope you won't either. There are more endings, more possibilities. I, I can feel it. We are just going to have to sort through them all until we find the one that fits. Okay, guys, I think actually this is where we're going to close off this premiere. And I, I want you guys to let me know right now in the comments. Leave some comments. Do you want to finish this story? Because if you're going to pick up the game yourself, I don't want to ruin it for you. I really want you to, to enjoy it and, and at least you'll know. I don't want you to know the ending. So... If this is something you want to see me complete, let me know because I will. I will get this done. We will finish the whole thing. I'm sure there's an hour or two left based on what I've been told by PR. So if you want to see how this ends, we've got other things. Um, you know, we can use hard instead of chill. I think we've got a couple options. We can we can come all the way back to here and we can we can do flight instead of fight. Like there are multiple things for us to do. This one doesn't matter. We could always go back there and change that. But there's a lot that we can change. Um, and if you guys want to see more of it, I'm happy to play more. So thank you guys for coming out. I hope you really did enjoy this. If you want to see more again, let me know. But until next time, thanks for watching and have a fantastic rest of your day. Goodbye.